Welcome to Trivial Debates. Welcome to this week's edition of Trivial Debates. We're having some awesome new debates this week. Uh, what is this, our seventh, eighth, eighth, eighth ep- episode? Eighth episode. You know, get through our six categories here, we guys. We got movie, TV, music, sports, history, and wild card. Um, each week, we you know kind of try to have a debate, and you know we see who does the best, and we get to the end, and then we declare a winner. Uh, Which our won't be Dave. Our panelists <laughs> this week, Dave. Whatever. Don't cut that out. <laughs> What is your record, Dave? <laughs> Let's bring up his record. We, oh, and we all know it. We should, we should actually plug the website because the website has the statistics now. Yep. TrivialDebates.com. Go check it out. Check out the it, record book. There you will find Dave is 0-5. <laughs> he's, he's hoping to God this is his night, but... This is my night. This is, I can feel it. He's know? got two he's seasoned. Wearing, he's wearing a nice outfit. He's got he's got the hat on to celebrate. I had to get team. my ears ready. I had to get. He's got three lined up. I got all my <laughs> all my facts lined up in front of me, so I can fact check anything I need to. I'm ready to argue. I'm ready to battle. Let's get this on. Dave wants to get it on, guys. <laughs> Let's get all it right. on. Now, uh, you, you got to introduce the other two. Oh, the other do two. we even matter? The other I two are the usuals. The usual. My victims. This the usual yeah. suspects. <laughs> victims. <laughs> At one and four. So, not slightly better than me. Slightly better than, than Dave. Uh, a one win is way better than how many wins do you have, sir? Zero. Oh, that's well, right. Well, you did beat him. So. And I be- beat him, which <laughs> is kind of like winning the Special Olympics, really. <laughs> At one and four, <laughs> Jody Simpson. That would be me. And... Two minutes in, I already said something wildly offensive. <laughs> awesome. That's what this podcast is about, and that's why I gotta keep getting invited back. It's well, either that or they just keep letting me in. Oh well, yeah, that's part it's of it. It's probably too. mostly that. Yeah. Okay, and at one and two, we have Kevin Millard. One well, and two, that's a good record. It's, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's respectable. He can go to two or two. Respectable. <laughs> 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 I'm no one to comment on a respectable win. It's a very respectable win you have. It only took me two tries to win. Who did you How win many against? does it take you to win, Dave? Uh, <laughs> who did you win against? <laughs> who did you win against? I think you won against Jeff, didn't you? Uh, I don't remember. I can't remember either. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I won. All we, know <laughs> is that, all we know is that Jeff hosts the most because he seems to win the most as mm. well. That's, That's why right. we like him as the host, this because is, then we have a sporting chance. This is my fourth time hosting, which is twice, no, it's the most. The next closest is me with two. Yeah, so I've, tw- I've doubled your yeah, participation in the hosting chair. We're just going to show you how many chair. times we've given you a chance to win, and you still can't. You know what? Tonight's my night. Tonight's, tonight's the night. Tonight's right. his night, yeah. and we are going to get right into this. So we need to do a couple plugs before we do. Oh, who are we plugging? Uh, we are plugging again. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Instagram. We you know subscribe to our iTunes feed. If you like, you know don't like a certain uh, debate we're doing, you can skip ahead. Uh, you know the time to the time uh, index in the description. Time index in the description. You can check that out. Um, all links can be found at our website. So let's let's get it on, guys. Let's get it on and let's start. Let's start. We're gonna you know we're gonna. I'm go. ready. I'm ready. I can't wait. Ding ding. I already threatened ding, to beat ding. somebody with bricks today. So. What is the best movie set in the future? And we're gonna start with Dave. What what did you choose? What's the best movie set in the future? I picked a 2012 American science fiction action thriller called Looper. <laughs> Jody has sighed already. <laughs> I haven't even got to the sigh yet. <laughs> right now I'm thinking about crying. <laughs> I will, you know what? You guys all chose interesting but unexpected choices. So uh, this movie takes place in the year twenty forty four, and in this movie, uh, which is set in the future, people have started to develop some amazing abilities, like they can move coins or something with their mind. They've developed basic telekinesis. Thirty years ahead of that, they've invented time travel, but because disposing of a body is so difficult. They have to send the body back in time. The victim, the the or, like the mafia, whoever wants to kill people, they have to send that person back in time. They're killed by what's called a looper, um, and then you know after doing so many kills, they eventually have to close their loop 
by killing themselves. Um, and then they get 30 years and a fortune to spend before they eventually getting off. It's kind of you know, um, an amazing concept and was really well done. It really shows a dystopian version of today because the, everyone in the film is pretty much poor. They don't have a lot. You know, It's kind of like the Wild West in this film. And that's what it kind of really feels like. Uh, stars you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as the younger version of Bruce Willis who comes back to uh, defeat the crime lord of the future. And, you know, this, this, this film has been, it's got so much praise for its acting originality and its action sequences. And I just think it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic time travel story and it is actually set in the future. And I think that has to be a, a clear point of distinction here because um, I don't think going, like just going back in time or going to the future counts because that's still a movie set in the present. Where you happen to go to the future, this movie starts in the future and deals with the with an even greater future. Good point, and uh, that's the first time I think in history Dave has been able to get an answer out with you guys busting his balls. I was so, busy looking up something. I'm sorry. He's still, <laughs> still crying. That is the problem with the tablets. Is you guys are, are going to be you know reactive enough? You're going to be. I just want to point out to the audience that my tablet is more erect than <laughs> Dave's tablet. It is. It's it's definitely it's, it's definitely higher. It's vain. And uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's got a little bit more girth, too, I think. A little girth, okay. All right, Jody, what did you pick? Well, you know what? Future was a weird one for me because I didn't know how to interpret this question. I thought, was it about future time travel, stuff like that, or was it just a movie that was in the future? So I chose a movie that's in the future. I chose the 1986 classic Aliens. Aliens. Okay. Not Alien, Aliens, the no, sequel. not Alien, Aliens. The James Cameron one. The James Cameron one. Yeah. The one with Bill motherfucking Paxton, all right? Because that's just the way it needs to happen. Okay. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the reason why <laughs> is because, number one, it takes place in 2079. I actually had to look that up because there's no reference in the movie to it, actually, as to when, other than, like, screens and stuff like that. So I couldn't actually remember. Uh, but it takes place in 2179, uh, which is approximately 75 years after the original Alien movie. Um, obviously, it takes place with the Colonial Marines going down, kicking some fucking ass because they, you know, figure out all the, the you know, what's going on kind of thing. And obviously, without going into the story because everybody fucking knows it. Um, the thing that, what makes, what I think that makes the movie is because, number one, great action movie, got a little bit of horror elements, and it's got some of the cheesiest fucking 80s lines in it. Like, you know, what was the, uh, well, Bill Paxton, uh, Shit, I can't remember it. Oh, I should have wrote it down. Uh, There's no good lines from this movie. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> I, I let him go without any saying anything. He's Jody and you. And now he's trying to he, he's trying to run into my shit. Congratulations, you've become a verb. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've always been a verb. Just ask anybody. Uh, but the thing that I, I like about it is the the planet the planet itself that was in the first movie was colonized. It's now you know it's got a mining uh, mining element to it. And all of a sudden, they get a distress call, try to figure out what's going on, and of course, you know, Ripley shows up as well. You know, okay, but awesome. So, overall, just fun movie to watch. It is in the future. It depicts the future as a pretty grim, you know, alien infested universe. Uh, like but, most movies set but in the future. A lot of movies set in the future, but I think you know, there's you can't compare Aliens to fucking Looper. Like, come on, Looper. <laughs> It's in a fucking cornfield. Looper! I, I like the way you say it. You just go, Looper! <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, honestly, Looper. Like, it's hell of a lot better than Aliens. Oh, you are so full of shit. It's coming out of your ears. Okay, Kevin. Actually, let me check. Can you, can you, are, they, are they brown eyes? No, they're kind they're of... They're blue. They're kind of shit blue. All right, anyway. Can you top... Shit blue. Can, <laughs> can you top these two movies? I you might see. Be. What do you choose? The original Planet of the Apes. Yeah, oh, that's a good, that's a good one. Really way good. set way in the future. Now we're just to be clear, we're talking about the Heston one. We're not talking about the terrible yeah. remake one. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> the the original. Or the, or <laughs> the, the original. Or the new movie. trilogy that's called, that's been coming out. The newest one's not bad, but it's different. This it's movie different. is just fucking great. It is. It's not my only argument, but I just have to start out by saying that. It, but I think you can concur. Aliens is pretty fucking great too. Oh, I was bored. You were bored with Aliens? Yeah, really? It's totally. very boring. Really? It wasn't as boring as Looper, though. Let's be... Let's be Never honest. seen Looper. You know so. why I haven't seen you would it? Because like it. it's terrible. <laughs> you would enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, everybody knows the story of Planet of the Apes. The 
Yeah. They go forward in time to a planet that they don't know is their planet. And it's been taken over by apes. I love this movie because it has so much to say about the human condition. Because you see it. You see how the apes act is towards humans. Basically is how in the 60s, anyway, we acted towards animals. And the, the, the prejudices that we have and, and all of that stuff. And it <laughs> there's so many I didn't prepare too well for this one um, neither did I could you tell <laughs> <laughs> there's so much so much good stuff about this fucking movie it it, it 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 shows how if you have all knowledge in the power of say the government or religion or you mix government and religion, that's always dangerous. I mean, they, 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 the apes, they were acting like they didn't know that humans came before them and all of that stuff. But turns out Dr. Zayas knew all the, all the time. But he was the defender, chief scientist and defender of the faith. Remember that. And it, from it, it just shows how... Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. <laughs> Dr. Zayas. Oh, was that only in The Zayas. Simpsons? That was in The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stage show. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. The, the music fits with this movie perfectly. You'll, you'll be hard-pressed to find a better musical score. Mm. Not good to listen to on, like, say, a CD, but good in the movie. It accompanies the movie. Good in the movie. And my favorite part of this movie is you know at the beginning because you've seen the trailers or whatever that the apes talk but they don't talk they, they go through that whole scene where they land on the planet and then the apes are hunting the humans yeah and they don't say a word and they don't say a word yeah. and they, they finally the first word in the movie is when they're taking the picture and the ape looks and goes smile and it's still shocking yeah it even is. though yeah, you, you that. know that the apes talk and that's fucking great movie making right there what year is that movie? 66, I think. 68. 68. 68. Yeah. Okay, so, first of all, why is any one, you know, free range right now, so just start going, because I'm not going to go to one person, because you've all had your piece, said what your movie is. Why is your movie better? My movie has the best cast of all of these. My movie is the most inventive. Inventive? Yeah. <laughs> inventive. That's right. Explain to me how that's inventive. Just the, the like, everything about it is like is so cavalier, like it's so cool the way they go about it. Just creating this world you believe exists, you know. It it has this time travel. <laughs> Do we take points away for complete bullshit? I like I like uh, writing down the word he said cavalier. Cavalier. I want to yeah. bring that back. I'm not confident a he can spell it and b he even knows what it means. <laughs> Car, right? It's a car, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it needs to be like what? Chevrolet right? made those. Don't worry about it. You know, be you know, what's the word? My yeah. movie doesn't doesn't need tricks. It doesn't <laughs> need. It, it's all it about tricks. It's, a, it's one fucking. The big whole trick. movie is a trick. That's the whole point of the movie. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't need it though. Oh. <laughs> It's all, it's it all, has yeah, it, but it would be you, a great movie. Because if you took that out, it would be two hours of Bruce Willis standing in a fucking cornfield. That's what it would be. No, it's good. The cornfield. I like it. It's getting angry. It's now. set in Kansas. <laughs> I'm actually get a fucking point for that. I, 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 I'm doing it. I'm the doing movie it. is set like, in Kansas. It's, you know, and there's a lot of cornfields in Kansas. But the cast, you know, you got um, Jeff Bridges and, uh, not Jeff Bridges, Jeff. Wow, it's a really good movie. movie. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I, he's, Jeff, the, he's the one arguing for his movie right Jeff now. Jeff Daniels, Jeff Daniels, Jeff Daniels, <laughs> Jeff Daniels. Uh, I, I think that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's excellent. How can you compare Jeff Daniels to Bill fucking Paxton? Come on, what's he good in other than Aliens? Everything he's in. No, Kevin's always got Paxton? Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. Ah, pretty good. Yeah, Charlton Heston. Well, he was good then. Not so much now. Yeah. Well, definitely not now, but <laughs> movies yeah. were different then. You damn but I had a Sigourney Weaver. Like, come on. Sigourney Weaver. How can come you on. fucking even compare nah, that? There's there's more social You're... commentary in, in Planet of the Apes. I mean, there is definitely you learn something by watching. The only Planet problem is that when I look at that question, there's nothing about it being social commentary. It's just about the future. 
Yeah, well, it's about well, the best. What movie? That is part of what makes it the best. I think Kevin has the strongest argument so far of why his movie is the best movie set in the future. I will agree. So you just don't want me to win. I no, but I will. I will let's because see, you know. your answer is horseshit. <laughs> My answer's not horseshit. You cannot pick any movie that didn't happen in the last ten fucking years. That's not true. That is absolutely true. Name one time that you've picked a movie in any of these things that had anything to do with the movie past then. Goodfellas. Okay, I'll give you. And you won that one. I won. Do you see the point here? I don't see any point. I know that my film is critically acclaimed. All right, so that's, let's, that is movie, so so let's, let's get some stats here. Your movies are silly. Let's get some stats here. Silly. <laughs> Internet movie, silly. Internet movie database. Oh my god. Internet movie database. Which one has the highest Aliens, rating? Aliens, eight point four. Uh huh. Planet of the Apes, eight point oh. Yours, seven point two. Yeah. Fuck you. You're all, you're all a passing grade, and you're all about you know a C or a B plus. Season yeah. D's win degrees. Or get degrees. But Dave's yeah, movie yeah. is rated the worst and is the newest, but it, it should be you know better at depicting future just based on the did year it came a, out. Did they make a second yeah. looper? They don't need to. It was perfect the first time. They movie. made a lot of shitty alien sequels, that's for sure. Uh, they only nah, you got, I mean, Planet of the Apes, you got the dangers of nuclear war. I mean, that's how the whole Yeah, but you have to admit, every Planet of the Apes I think that's the, the a point for shit. me is that mine doesn't rely no, on C. No, no, no. The Sagan one was brutal. They, they, uh, they spawned I like the, ton, the ones after that. These huge, like, terrible sequels, both Aliens and Planet of the Apes. Multiple, multiple. They regurgitating the same thing over Your and over. Your movie was the made first... three fucking years ago. Because Shut the... up! Because the first <laughs> movie was so great, they tried to make it again, but fucking 2000, uh, 11, right? 2012. Oh, it's 2012. 12, yeah. My movie doesn't rely on all these sequels. Your movie people. hasn't been around long enough to give a shit. <laughs> and no one gives a shit. Because in ten years, no one's going to give a fuck about Looper. Everyone's gonna but they Looper. will give a shit about Planet of the Apes, and they definitely give a shit about Aliens. I, I know why I think they pick Looper is because I think he because knows because he knows he's gonna lose because so he, he, well just lose. he knows Dylan's a big fan of Looper because yeah heard but it. Dylan's not on the <laughs> fucking show yeah but he's listening and he's going he's pandering to the Dylan audience. right now I guarantee you is topless rubbing his nipples last time Dylan was here he said something to the effect that Looper was the greatest time travel movie he had ever seen it's true and <laughs> it's the greatest time travel movie that Dylan's ever seen <laughs> uh, it, was, it was something to that effect he, I mean he might get mad at me for saying that but I think it was something you know what, that, that was something I have to like give Dave credit because that was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny how he did that. What, Looper? No, uh, he said that is the greatest time travel movie that Dylan has ever seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does it, nothing for his argument, but it's still funny. It's as pretty funny, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the only time you have won the movie round, Dave, is when you answer Goodfellas. So maybe you should go to some classics a little bit more. Uh, I'm giving the point to Kevin. I think he made the best I point. Kevin earned it. Kevin earned that one. And I think we did that. I'm not there to test that point. He made but the best. But if Looper won, I would have fucking cracked an iPad over his head. <laughs> he, <laughs> made <it right> now. <laughs> he made the best point about it what this movie's about. <laughs> no, it would have been his. <laughs> How it's set in the future and what it means for the human condition. So. I, I um, okay, so we'll go to the TV sh- uh, category. And again, it's kind of another technical question we got here. Um, what is the best TV show based on a comic book character? Now you guys could take this a couple of ways. Yeah, I my you know original thought for the question was you know all these shows are coming out Daredevil, Arrow, Flash, all these shows. Okay, I went like, a completely different way. <laughs> right. Well, well, you know, a couple I of did. didn't go that completely different, but I did go different. And so um, my idea was you know you know the, the, they're revolving a whole show you know which usually shows have tons of characters around one character, and uh, I would like you know. Just, to see just, which one is the best, because now, just to be clear, we can't use the Marvel Cinematic Universe in this scenario, right? Sure because can. it's not a TV show. Yeah. Oh. Oh. They have Agent Carter. Have they? <laughs> they have Agent. See, that's what happens when it's more erect, my friend. They have Agent <laughs> Carter as a show. Um, Daredevil is Marvel. Yeah, do you call Marvel Agent Carter a show? Because that's terrible. It's still a show. It's it's, it's, it takes place in the MCU. If any of you, if any of you pick that, I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> A lot of people like that show. Yeah, like Dave, he's probably got it on his PBR. Agents of Shield. <laughs> Agents of Shield. Yeah, Agents it? of Shield. Terrible. Is it technically really it. based on a character? So I wouldn't no, have really not. liked that answer. Well, mind you, the the uh, the agent one. What her name is? You know, fuck Carter. Her. Yeah, Carter. That one. Piggy Carter. Yeah, who gives a shit? <laughs> anyway, well, that, either way, that would be based on a character. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. But was it based on a character that was in a comic? I can't Are you saying you want this show to focus on one character? I, I, I think it should be, you know, I allowed one answer, but I think it should be based on, 
you know, one character is the primary focus of the show. Not an ensemble. No, yeah, not like where it's... You know, the, You're not going to attempt to argue my answer, are you? No, but I just right. what I want from the question, and this is what my like I said it was my original idea for the question is what is the best show based basically around one character, and the rest of the characters are just supporting. And I'll get to your answer after uh, why I allowed it, because right. I was going to not allow it, but I I feel like I still I, think I can argue it. I think we're good. Okay. All right. So, and I, since started with Dave to the last. last time. Okay, we can go to Kevin. Since he just won the round, he has to go first. All right, right, it'll be short. But it should be no surprise to anybody. Batman! That I picked 1966 (laughs) Batman. Yeah, I knew you would. I was actually actually thinking of picking it because I knew you were in this one, so I'm like, you know what, I should just pick Batman, then he's fucked. Kevin doesn't pick anything before 1980. For (laughs) what? He likes the 60s. It's been a long time since I've had TV. Um... I picked 1966 Batman because it is... Well, that's part of it, of course. (laughs) Um, All of the franchises of Batman today owe their popularity to this series. This series brought Batman to the masses, to people who didn't read comic books. It, uh, It still has many of the villains that were in it are still the archetype for the new villains like they're still based they're not really based on the the original comic they're based on that show Mm. on those portrayals and um and it was it was a a fucking sensation at its time all of that and it's a kid's show and it so appeals to the masses and it's definitely about one character and i can watch it today i laugh for different reasons yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's still entertaining though. It is still entertaining. Like I, I've, I've watched the occasional one even now, and I wasn't a massive. And fan I don't, of it. I don't think Batman would be as popular without that show. Well, it's like going back to um, the, oh, or, the original Star Trek. You know, the, the, a lot of those episodes they're kind of um, ridiculous to go back and watch. But yeah, there's ridiculous and amazing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not every episode though. No, there is a couple of pretty yeah, terrible some stinkers, episodes. But yeah. that's with everything. Yeah, true enough. Yep. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah, my my pick is like short answers today. All the season two was terrible, but anyway. Yeah. All right, Dave. <laughs> oh, I'm up. Yeah, you're up because we're because we're leaving him we're to leaving last. Me on the last because he has to explain why he's allowed mine. <laughs> well, I picked um, the Flash, the 2014 <laughs> version. <laughs> Tony, I, I'm beginning to think he picks nothing but answers that he knows I'm going to get angry about. I think it's part of. Like, do you think that's actually starting to get set up? Like, I'm just going to be like, I, I, yeah, no, the Flash. That's really uh, I was idea. laughing at your reaction. I've never seen. It. But he, he was he was very particular about this answer, and he kept going, you know, like, is this about a character? And then I think you you had another choice, and you're like, fuck, I'm well, going with the Flash. To <laughs> be fair, though, I think the Flash does fall into that. Like, Oh, definitely. Follow definitely follow I, I can. I not watch the show, so I, he's got to sell me on the show. A little bit. I I really bounced around on this a lot. I I really thought about cartoons a lot. I mm-hmm. thought there was a lot of good cartoons I could have went with, yeah. but I feel like a cartoon would be a cop out. I think live action is what more TV is about mm-hmm. uh, in terms of being accepted. And I went with the Flash because I feel like it is a really exciting comic book show that I've never seen quite done this way. It's technically a spin-off of Green Arrow or just Arrow, which is a lot more dark and brooding. What I like about the Flash is it's fun. It's 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 really like what superheroes are supposed to be. They got a villain every week and he's got to run around fast and he's got like a whole team helping him figure out how he's going to um defeat that villain. He's got Captain Cold, he's got the Trickster, who was played by Mark Hamill, in the original 1990 Flash, as well as in this new Flash. Um, he's he's kind of like a little different than how we think of, of, of this character. Barry Allen, we typically think, is more of a, a smartass. This version is more, he's more like a nerd. He's more of a, like a bumbling, awkward kind of a guy. But he's, you know, he's got lots of hot women lots of hot women after him for some reason which is, is nice he's a forensic scientist which is which is keeping with the comic books um, and what's what's really the shining thing on the show is two of the cast members in particular Tom Cavanaugh as Harrison Wells who is doubling secretly uh, as it, not only his mentor but also the reverse flash his arch nemesis so the whole time he's help, he's helping Barry Allen learn to become more and more fast 
but he's also doing this for nefarious reasons because he was actually the reverse Flash who killed his mother when he was a kid. And his father had to go, went away for the murder. And then his, his, <laughs> then, so, <laughs> so then he has to go live with Jesse L. Martin, who is from Law and Order yes. uh, and Rent and a whole bunch of other stuff. Sure. So he plays his surrogate father on the show. Yeah. Uh, West, Detective West. I'm beginning West. to think that I'm going to have to staple my nutsack to the chair <laughs> to actually wake up from this fucking thing. Like, all he's done is just talk about, like, you've read the fucking Wikipedia page. No, I didn't read any of that. I know all that. Dude, it's... I'm fucking on the Wikipedia page. That's basically it. Like, that's the, you've read almost the premise. That's almost it. Oh. If, in fairness, the thing, like, this is kind of what it's like to watch some of these shows. This is why I picked this question, because I'm watching Daredevil right now, and I'm kind of going, like, is this show good or bad, or is it just kind of, like, you know, getting through the episodes? And I feel like with Arrow, and the, yeah, I haven't watched Flash, but I'm guessing it would be the case with Flash, but... Um, what I think with, with the Flash, you really don't need to have seen last week that much. You know, a little bit, like, they have recurring characters, recurring villains, but typically it's... Flash has got a crisis this week. Uh, it's more episodic in nature, which I think works well. But there is this this kind of serialized thing going on. And Tom Cavanaugh as Harrison Wells is what steals the show. This reverse Flash, some of the sequences with him really make... Which was one of the character I was really aware of. I think that I've never really appreciated the Flash until this show. Because I think what makes a comic book character really good is his pantheon of villains. That's what made Batman great. That's what made yeah, Spider- <laughs> That's what made Spider-Man great is that he had a whole roster of villains, and uh, you know I think that's what's always hurt like characters like Superman is that you know he doesn't really have that many people he can fight other like Lex Luthor and Brainiac maybe, and okay. and, the, and the Flash has got so many new villains I've learned about from watching this show. All right, so you know you learn a lot, and it, you know it's fun. It's a fun show, and. It's good special this, effects. This whole Great thing villains. was judged on passion. David win every fucking episode. Like you know what? <laughs> I have to give it to him because honestly, he will argue anything passionately. He's very good at it. Yeah. Even if he's terribly wrong, <laughs> which is almost all the time. That counts for a lot. Well, I don't even know if that was entertaining or if it put me no, to no, sleep. No, no, that that wasn't that particular. That was wasn't entertaining. But, but I will say, often it but is. But I will say, his X Men Welcome X versus yes. Xavier <laughs> reference was fantastic from last week's episode, and uh, you should probably listen to that because this one so far has been terrible. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get into your TV wrong. show. Prove me wrong. Prove me something. And better. the reason I'm and Dave knows what it is because he tried to pick it first. Um, you. Pick The Walking Dead. And yeah. the reason why I'm letting you pick The Walking Dead is because that show is about Rick. It yeah, it does Rick. revolve around him. It's yeah. around. It's it a, starts with Rick and Rick. That's it's about it him. Yeah. And there's, there's so many episodes that he's not even in. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Here, hold on. He wants this point. He's, never, he's not winning a movie and TV lately. There's so only two episodes he's never been in. Still Should two. change his shirt before <laughs> every <laughs> fucking episode. <laughs> All right, good rebuttal. Good rebuttal like, to his two. argument. That's it. All right. Rookie. So opening. And one of them was about stand. bats, and the other one was that terrible fucking episode from the second season. Anyway, we don't even talk about the second season because it's terrible. Which, by the way, you don't even have one yet. And by the way, your most popular network is the fucking CW, so you can fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Walking Dead. Let's talk about that for a second, boys, because we're gonna make this nice and sweet. One of the highest rated shows currently on TV. Seventeen million viewers for the opening of season five they closed with a 15.5 million rating think about that for a second 15.5 million people that's 15.5 million people that know more than you do dave because you don't pick the walking dead i tried to pick the Walking. i know you did but you didn't so but it's still not the best it's definitely you know why you tried to pick the walking dead first because you know what's right it's the right answer because dave (laughs) He's, he's throw the Daryl argument a bit. Oh, yeah, I'm going to throw it in there for a bit. <laughs> Dave, Dave, let's just talk. Just mm-hmm. you and me for a second. <laughs> All no, right. No. Dave, you know I like you. I don't love you. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I wouldn't take a bullet for you, but, you know, past that, I'd take a hockey ball. Um, but y- you're wrong, and you just need to bow down now because you know your show's on the CW, which doesn't mean fuck all to anybody else in the world other than, like, teenagers and fucking old ladies. And <laughs> who watches comic book shows? And I can't even argue. Teenagers and old ladies. <laughs> it's true. 
Anyway, I can't argue against Kevin's because Kevin's was fantastic for its time. It's gone now. Silly. What do you mean it's fucking silly? It's Batman fantastic. 66? Batman 66. Original comic fantastic. books were silly. Yeah, they were No, dark. the originals were dark. dark. Then there was like sort of oh, a, a resurgence. No, they of were the not silliness. dark. They were oh, ridiculous. See, now we're, either way, let's face it. He's doing some deflection here. We know that he's wrong. He knows he's wrong. He picked Walking Dead first, which two out of three people can't be wrong in this scenario. The Walking Dead has it because it has everything and it's about Rick. Rick wakes up, and the entire thing is about how Rick perceives the rest of the world now, and how the world perceives him. And that's what the whole show is about. I will say, second season was fucking terrible. But anybody who's tuned into the fifth season, other than Jeff Meter, because I know he doesn't really enjoy it. Um, I kind of lost interest after Herschel got killed. What's like the, they broke up of the prison? I've watched like the first half of the yeah, season. Yeah, but now it's starting to get awesome again. Yeah, but people anyway. say that all the time about Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch the first That's the only reason why the Flash the got half. renewed. And I've watched a bit of, um, like I watched up until when Beth got killed. I haven't seen anything after that. Really. It's actually um, I actually didn't like spo- the, yeah, oh, this whole fucking show's about spoilers, so let's yeah. get over that. Don't now. listen to this shit. Just write spoilers. Here, will let be me here. spoil something for you. Looper is a terrible fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't bother. Save your money. And uh, you know what else is also terrible, Dave? What makes things even more terrible than Looper? I would watch the Looper 20 times over before I watch The Flash again, because The Flash was fucking terrible. And oh, wow. Give it a shot. Like, it was on the other night. I did I was, give it a shot. Right. I gave it a shot for about 20 fucking minutes and then went... Holy fucking shit. A, I'm watching the CW, and B, it's fucking The Flash. I don't give a shit about The Flash on a good day. And even then, I still gave it a chance in the fucking movie. The, the show's terrible. It's almost as bad. I well, just, just watch uh, The Flash for um, Supernatural commercials. Well, I'm so, also on the CW. Okay, so there you go. There you go. Kevin's actually helped me out here. Walking Dead wins it. There's no fucking debate here. Let's face it, The Walking Dead has a much better, higher subscription rate than everybody else in the table here. Obviously, Kevin. Mine's only in the first season. Yeah, you know why yours is only in the first season? Because that show originally was going to be greenlit five years ago. And then they decided to back down on the original pilot. Look it up. Anyway... Well, then they just re- they went back, they retooled it, and they made it They retooled better. it. Tool being the key fucking word here. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit for tools. Nah, That's I, what it is. Wa- Walking Dead Walking Dead is going to fucking end, and then it's going to be over. That's right. The original Batman it's revitalized watch, an entire franchise. I started watching season one again of Walking Dead. It's fucking phenomenal. It's That's fun great, to watch. but it, if it's going to die after, people aren't going to fucking <laughs> watch it. Yes, most but people. Do you think anybody in five years from now is even going to look at the Flash? No, no. <laughs> do you know why? Because it's on the CW. The All only right. thing the CW has ever produced correctly is Supernatural, and that's a fucking terrible show. I was between David Jody, but now I'm between Kevin and Jody. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! wait, wait. <laughs> they, I've let them speak. They I, death blowed you out of here. Like, <laughs> no, wait, no. The, the Flash. I fucking harumed in that man. Yeah, the Flash is only in its first season. It's already yep, got six million terrible. people watching. Six it. fucking million. That's it's only it. in the first season. Six million. I could go drum up six million people to watch my balls shake. No, that's a good. That's a good audience for a first season. And it's a terrible it's, audience from it's a got balls great shake, special effects. <laughs> Uh, it's got Captain Cold. It's got the Trickster. Who fucking cares? Who's Captain Cold. Captain exactly. Cold. <laughs> See, like no one gives a shit. That's what's great about it because I'm learning about all these great villains. I'm learning about all these fucking great villains that are going to be on a show that's going to fucking end next year anyway. <laughs> Who gives a shit? No, this show's not ending. Dude, it's where <laughs> Agent Carter's going to be. Did you see the commercial where it was uh, it was all the Green Arrow guys and it was the Flash guys and they were like, let's have a fight club. Yeah, and that was just <laughs> fucking just about as cool as your entire description of the whole fucking right? show. It's got Bra- terrible. Brandon Routh. Is no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. That's why it's on the CW, you fucking idiot. All right. <laughs> I don't know who I'm going to decide on It's here. not him. I think I have to give the Jody for Thank passion you. alone. That's right. I'm going for passion this round. It's fun walking that good. It was a passion and round. it's not Dave. And Dave had it there for a while. And then yeah. Kevin chimed in and just kind of That's made right. it all come together. Good job, Kevin. I always lose with Batman, but Batman was fucking great. Batman was, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman was fun. All right, I'm really excited for this next category, Let's which is music. Up. All right. 
Which band or artist is the worst teen sensation? Now, you could go a whole bunch of ways here. You can go back to the 50s, 60s, 70s. I don't care where. But it almost, seems like... I almost put the Beatles just for Dave. Just for Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it's, They're not teens. It, I find it funny that the oldest pick here is Kevin's. and it's really? for, Yeah. And it, so that's what makes me laugh the most. <laughs> My which pick is always the oldest. Yeah. Even if it's sort Even of current. It, it's very... Like, it's more current than fucking Batman. Kevin's, like, <laughs> Kevin's like the renaissance man. And, and somehow he always picks the oldest thing. Uh, I will just lay that out here, though. That's why Dave. my wife calls he, the old balls. He, he's won more than you. And he's played less games. Okay. He's good batting average. But you know, you're going to win this one. But this that. one, Jody's starting because he's, he's starting. he went last on the last one and right. he won it. I'm going to just, I'm going to make this one really quick and sweet and easy. One Direction. <laughs> one Direction. And I'll tell you why. I want to know why. I did two independent Google searches. First one, I looked up One Direction with the keyword terrible. Got 22 million results. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting way to argue. Thank you. I'm still going though. Let me finish. I looked up One Direction, awesome. I got 80, resu- 80, 80 million results. Which leads me to believe that A, the internet's terrible, and B, One Direction is too. End of discussion. Okay. Um, <laughs> one Direction, you know, okay, so. Are they go- teenagers? They were, when they, they were when they came to power, which, you know, was but through the X Factor. But one of them's factor. already left already. Yeah, Zayn left or whatever. You actually knew the name. That's a yeah, well, that's they talked about it on Bill Maher. That's the only reason I know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. they're a terrible band that easily you could you could change any of them out with anybody. You could sing for One Direction, right. no problem. What's his name? Dated Taylor Swift, uh, Harry. Well, you know, you got to give him credit for that, though, because that's that girl's all legs. Yeah, but he said she wasn't putting out. Who? Well, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Look like she does. That's what Harry Styles said for. He's, oh, like, he's like the front man for Would One Direction. Would you hang out with Taylor Swift if she wasn't putting out? Let's face it. Let's be honest here, boy. Well, she did that. hire a, a cat uh, psychiatrist or a cat psychic to tell her what her uh, tell uh, yeah, yeah, what her no, cat that, is saying. That's, or that's up to batshit crazy, really. Yeah, she's a, she's a little nuts. But yeah. uh, anyway, that's not the topic. She's, young, <laughs> um, she's a bit young. One Direction, I you know because I did. Some you know research on all your choices. One Direction was had like the biggest fan base of all of the ones you guys chose. Which so. just goes to show you how terrible the internet is and how terrible kids are nowadays. Interesting. Okay. All right. So I'm going from the social aspect of they're terrible because we've made them terrible. Kevin. All right. I went with Hanson. Also terrible. <laughs> Mbop. Mbop. <laughs> Two words. Mbop. <laughs> that goddamn song <laughs> was. Uh, unavoidable for like a year. One Direction, <laughs> I don't even know one song. Whoever you pick, I'm sure I don't even know one song. I'm sure you do. There's, all, there's only one song. But this <laughs> fucking song ruined my life. It was like, fight made me wish I was born without ears. It was fucking everywhere. Just everywhere. <laughs> I Fuck that song. I, I, Fuck that band. I, I went and listened them. to it today. and You I, what? I watched it today. <laughs> Before coming here, and I was, oh. I could not believe, I used to, like, when I was, like, 10 years old, I liked that song, because I was 10 years old, um, but. Well, you're not winning this one. <laughs> hey, oh. I listened to all your choices. That fucking song was on par with that Barney song. I liked Barney when yeah, I was exactly. there. Exactly. He was a big Barney kid. Yeah, so it was uh, all in line for me. Now I watch, I look back, and I like all sorts of good music now. And oh, I, yeah, and I, you understand your mistake. I understand my <laughs> mistake, but I didn't know any better. You know, he, he, he was also into country music, too. Yeah, country music. Yeah. That, that was a lot of, oh, fuck off. It's been so long, and now yeah, it's I, back. I, I, I listen to it, and, I, you know, I realize they don't really say any words. No! It's all... And they're awful. Yes, we can't pick that up on the mic, can we? <laughs> I don't know... You're picking that up on the mic? A little bit. I don't know anything else about them. I don't fucking want to know anything else about them. I hate them. They we suck. We can't play too much, That's though, it. then we got sued. Hate them. Hates Hanson. Okay, and what year did that song come out? Who you cares? Got that? It's like Too damn soon. 99, uh, something like that. Hold on here. Uh, let me work on that for you. All right, so... Uh, 1997. Unavoidable, too. I, I was that eight. fucking everywhere. I yeah, loved it when oh, I was that, that age, but brutal. that's why I, th- I, I picked this one, because I think I was going to have some sort of, um, except with One Direction, um, teen understanding of where these are all coming from. I picked um, One Direction because they're fucking terrible. They really are just, fucking terrible. Just, have you listened to anything they've done? They're terrible. Yeah, I've listened to them, and uh, I, I can see what you're saying. They're terrible. Um, all right. 
Um, Her videos are even worse. Would you say they're the worst boy <laughs> band ever? Ever? Like worse than like I would say New Kids on the Block. Or, yeah, or, NSYNC or... Yeah, I fucking hated New Kids on the Block. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't ruin my life like Hanson. <laughs> <No. laughs> like, see, I feel the same way about One Direction because every time I'm like on my on my satellite radio in the car and I have like any like somewhat popular station, there's always a fucking uh, One Direction song on it and it ruins my day. Comes on and you it just like ruins it. my day. You drive and you're like, I just want to drive this motherfucker right into a wall because right. it's fucking One Direction. I'm just not having that. So for you, you hate One Direction because you just can't stand to listen to their music. They're fucking terrible. Okay. They're terrible. All right, Dave. Who is the worst teen sensation? Rebecca Black. Who the fuck is that? Getting down oh, on Friday. That's the Friday. The joke. Friday song. Yeah, no one cares. All right, let's just <laughs> what go right past Dave. Gotta go down yeah, I, I have no idea. That's oh, it. No, no perhaps idea. we should play that one. All right, Fine. Play that shit. If, they, if he hasn't seen that, that is. I've, quite, I. I am so far out of everything current. It's in- this isn't even current. This is like 2011. <laughs> That's current to me. Yeah, <laughs> I pick 60s movies. <laughs> this is quite possibly one of the worst songs ever made. I don't even know how it got. I, I don't know her. That's okay. You assume. But this one is the closest in line with Hanson. <laughs> oh, that's already terrible. Oh, it's, it's only getting started. Oh, it's really bad. It's not. Oh, this is the beginning. Yeah. Oh no, it, it gets real bad. <laughs> oh god. You know what this reminds me of? Fucking uh, that song by U2 that The Edge does on Zuropa. Oh, uh, mellow or yellow. Something like that. that Lemon. Was. Lemon. That's it. That's exactly what it reminds me of. Yeah, listen to the lyrics here because they are astounding. It's not Friday. It's Friday. Friday, Friday. Do you want to get sued? What have I told you about this? What have I told you about singing? (laughs) You're going to have to blurt out half of this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's bad. As a co producer, I'm not going down for this. (laughs) That's bad. Have you had enough? Yeah, oh, yeah. (laughs) That's bad, but you know what? I'm never going to hear that song again. That fucking Hanson song is burned into my head forever. Did you notice that as soon as I said it, everybody started fucking singing that song? All of you did. That's true. It's a strong argument. Now, One the, Direction, record, you guys don't really listen to. This, ruined my fucking this, life. I this video that. that I just played for you has 78 million views. Yes. That means they're popular. One Direction's videos were around 400 million. It is the most disliked music video on YouTube. It surpassed Justin Bieber's baby with 1.3 million dislikes. Sorry, which boys. Is astounding. I'm trying to find something here. First destroy- There's this terrible Danny DeVito. Oh, yeah. How can you not say that's fucking terrible? That's pretty good. I think it is with the One Direction. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Dave. Dave just said it's pretty good. What, what I one win. Di- <laughs> <laughs> I fucking win. We're done. What's One Direction? Sorry, though? sorry, man. I win. Dave, Dave said it's fucking good. <laughs> I'm fucking winning this. One. I've never heard that one before. I've only heard like a couple of their songs. They're all bad, but it didn't ruin my life. Um, didn't Rhett McLaughlin say that One Direction is his favorite band? Who? Who? Rhett, Rhett and Link. Oh, did he really? Yeah. So I don't think. Okay, so that's two points for me. No, I think that that discredits you. What are you talking about? I don't even know who that is. Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, get Somebody it. on the internet. I, oh, okay. Yeah, like an internet, on the internet. An internet, like I do uh, get the show. internet, but it's so ironically, fast, ironically, but... we're on the internet. So I can't believe you haven't heard of the Friday song. No, that's no. you're not missing anything. No, obviously not. I kind of wish never, I had. I've heard of it, but I've never actually heard it. That's the first time I've heard it. That's the first time you've heard it. Uh, right now, coming into this, Dave had the strongest choice because this is quite possibly I the do. worst teen sensation. Thing I ever. will. I will concede to the fact that it's a terrible song, but to my if credit, she's the most hated YouTube video. Is but it was she a also teen she has more dislikes uh, than likes on YouTube. Then but she's not a sensation. But she was also number fifty-eight on the top Billboard charts. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was. Uh, it, it, she she still had like you know millions so she, of likes. The, just the story, more people hate words it. in that. But song. just to be clear, Billboard also <laughs> has rated the band had a song on top one hundred. No. The band, uh, <laughs> the band deserves to be at least uh, one, you okay. know, one song on the there. The story about Rebecca Black is that her parents basically wanted her to become a star. So they, they hired a songwriter. They hired a music right. video crew. They they wrote this very cheesy song. They auto-tuned the shit out of it. And then they produced You know what else the auto-tunes? I'm not Everybody done. on fucking One Direction. 
Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? All right, and, I finished. And, and then it, it came out, and this song was like poppy, catchy, but extremely mockable. And she became, uh, she was vitrally attacked on, on social media, despite having a huge amount of followers among tween girls at the same time. And that's why she's the worst teen sensation of all time. He knows a lot about this. Yeah, that's yeah, but Hanson, come on. Like, okay, just, uh, mm, Hanson, Hanson is annoying. I will give I you that. Fucking but awful. Hanson is an, was annoying in a day and age when we didn't have to hear it on the fucking YouTube all the time. See, and I have the exact opposite argument. I've never heard One Direction or What's Her Face so so fucking <laughs> until today. <laughs> But fucking Hanson was everywhere. You, I, it was unavoidable. <laughs> my opinion is my that... My ears still hurt. My opinion is that it's definitely between me and Kevin. It is. It is what are you talking about? He fucking uh, said he loved One Direction. Uh, Obviously, there's a I don't, moment. I don't like You're like, oh, it's pretty fucking good. That Obviously. proves that someone likes it and doesn't think it's the worst. I this don't. is Dave. He's not a someone. <laughs> That's true. But let's face it. One Direction is more liked than disliked, I think. I think you you know, you know, can say what you want about the internet. But... And the thing, One Direction doesn't have a song that I go, that is a terrible song. Right. And, and that's what we do have. With I'm so angry I have spit on my iPad. There's <laughs> nothing about One Direction that is impre- incredibly impressive or like hateable either. It's just kind of like eh. Hanson and Rebecca Back are hateable. Straight up hateable. And they both have where one of the... Probably the top most hated songs ever. If you like played them, people go, "Oh my God, stop playing that now!" Right? Right. Between them, I, I don't think One Direction has a song like that. I think if it's on, no one's gonna. Neither of your bands ever ruined anybody's life. <laughs> but mine, this one did. It was just, it was brutal. You're, it was brutal. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing that or that fucking Barney song. Everywhere. You okay. As an adult, Where, for fuck's sake. I love you. Okay. Where are you going? Yes. I won't, I won't bore you Unreal. with all the details, but I have found a list of 100 reasons why One Direction sucks. <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying to come back here. He's like, you could do the same thing, though, for any uh, boy band, right? Because like, a lot of people hate that. boy bands. Here, hold on. Let me see if I can find a list for Mbop. Or whatever the fuck they're called, Hanson. Well, if it was Kevin's list, it would be, you know... Did, all you, did you see Rebecca entries. Black's... All 100 entries would be, they ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons they hate Hanson. Okay, hold on. Do you, um, it's on a tripod page. Did you see the sequel so to Friday? Friday? Well done. No, <laughs> oh it was Saturday. God. It was Saturday. Okay, I did not see it, but I think I was one and done with, <laughs> with <some laughs> fr- the Friday song. <laughs> but the thing so is, I can only find five reasons the reason, to hate Hanson. Okay, the reason I picked this question again is that... I only have and one reason, and Dave, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Kevin have been making the point really well. Where all right, just give it to one of these guys. So we move well, on just Spider-Man. whereas it, it's so bad don't give it that it was a sensation. <laughs> Dave's wrong. That people had to watch this shit or listen to it because it was so bad, but people actually thought it was good. And that you know, I can remember being a young kid liking Hanson and Bop. You know, <sighs> being a dumb kid. And, you know, with Rebecca Black, I'm sure the same thing happened with, you know, kids that, you know, were Eamon's age, you know, like we're going through, you know, watching that going, well, it's nice, it's good, it's not. You, you, they haven't listened to good music yet. Do you know they did a green <laughs> cover of Friday? No. I think maybe, yeah. But that I kind of gives I, him a point, though. I think I hate to got, admit it, but that does actually work in his favor for his argument. For the Glee thing? Yeah, if you have a cover on Glee, there's... Uh, <laughs> what? A cover? Oh, God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> they didn't cover Hanson on Glee. No. Too. Why would they? I think it would have totally been Totally irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it ruined I'm not going to argue that they're relevant. I fucking hate them. <laughs> <laughs> ruined my life. I... <laughs> I, I, I will say Hanson was the hardest w- sit through of all. Like I picked one song, with Bob. Of course, but, it was the hardest to sit. It through. was the hardest. You have sit ears. It was really hard. You're telling me that Hanson was harder to listen to than what he just played. Yeah, really? that song Umbob was a tough listen to because it's literally at least with first. Friday, it's like it kind of you know it, it's got it it's point. got a verse and like not that Hanson uh, doesn't, but it's got like a verse that's different from its chorus. Then then it goes into a rap thing. It's terrible. Don't get me wrong, but Umbob is hey, the same shit hands. over and over. <laughs> Every what? time he's gonna say something, he does this. <laughs> Mine is the most tragic story. 
Because mine is the story of when parents should just tell their kids, no, you can't do that. You can't be famous. You can't be... What about me? But she did do it, and she did like do Kevin. it. He's been, he's been scarred for life. Hanson was a, a boy, like a brother, three brothers who started a band. They could legitimately play instruments. They tried to make something. They made something horrible. They ruined Kevin's life, sure. But... Okay. Mine was, she had no talent. I guess I'm Mine so was, up. her parents allowed her to do something that got her attacked and ruined her whole life because her parents couldn't say no. They just kept saying yes and they kept spending money and they synthesized this pop song that should, should never have gone out. And it was so horrible, yet so catchy, that, that it, it destroyed a young girl's psyche. She's going to be in I, therapy I, for the rest of her life. The Hanson brothers aren't going to be. They I, I did need okay. I'm here for a second. Okay, because if you remember a couple, a couple weeks ago, we had a podcast where we were talking about food. Okay. And we were talking about food that we didn't like. And you were really pickled passionate eggs. about pickled eggs. Yes. I picked avocados. Right. I just want to mention that when I went for a cider in, in, in Dave's fridge, he has avocados in the fridge. Yeah. That should be an instant qualification. I actually was originally <laughs> going to go with him, but because now that he has avocados... Do you want me to make you some guacamole? No, I want you to fuck off and lose. <laughs> I still think Dave gets the point. Really? Because, well, yeah. I'm not going to dispute. That was a fucking terrible song. God, I can't... I think I could actually probably... That's the first time I've ever heard it, and that is terrible. Oh, oh yeah. It reminds me of that fucking U2 song. Just really, the, really watch it sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. listen no, to it. Yeah, really yeah. listen to the lyrics. Yeah, that song. It, it was... Yes. Umbop was a harder sit through because it's so long, that song. It's like five minutes It's long, long, and it's eight words. And it's the same <laughs> shit over and over. No, R- sorry, it's eight... Fucking sound. You know, it's not even eight words. I had fun hating Friday watching it today. I was like, oh, fuck, I hate I remember hating this. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it because I haven't actually um, seen it. Do you know what other song ruined my life? Fucking Gangnam Style. Really? Oh, oh, oh God, my fucking kids all over and over. Well, and that's the worst thing is your kids actually shit. ruined you. Well, oh, that, that song... Because uh, my kids did that to all, me, too. All about that oh. bass. You know, like, that song is like... Oh, uh, like, the kids love that song. Like Megan Trainer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all about that ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know about that one. Okay, so let's go. My kids haven't been on that. Let's no. plunge into a darker, deeper, darker sports tragedy question. <laughs> I went pretty dark. Screw the laughs. <laughs>, <We're pretty dark. laughs> Screw it. We don't need any laughs. We go from the worst teen sensation to the most reckless tragedy related to a sports star. Now that that couldn't get any more fucking different than that. So that is pretty odd. Yes, it was. A, we were sports tragedy. I had a different um, <laughs> Hanson. <laughs> listen to Hanson. Hanson. <laughs> they played in sports arenas. <laughs> they were a tragedy. They're still making music, by the way. It's still terrible. Oh, they're doing <laughs> what? They're, they're yeah, a, I, when I was watching Umbop, I went and saw they had a new song like from like I think it was four years ago. It was 2011, and I was I was so bad. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as Umbop, but it was close. Um, okay, so we who do who are we gonna start? I with started here? last time. So. Okay, we're gonna start with Kevin this time. All right, Kevin, who did you choose? What is the most reckless? Um, Tragedy related to a sports star. The murders of Ron Goldman <laughs> and Nicole Brown Simpson. And the worst thing is, he said it with a snicker on his face, <laughs> which kind of creeped me out a bit. And I have to ride home. So you want reckless? He runs out of his house, stabs two people to death, knowing he's going to be the lead suspect. Who fucking does it anyway? Who cares? Then tries to flee. In the white Ford Bronco, in the lowest speed chase ever, there's blood evidence all over, and even though he gets away with it, he gets away with it, then he goes and writes a fucking book called, If I Did It, This Is How It Happens. <laughs> if that's so fucking reckless, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so you're saying writing the book is the reckless thing? All of it is reckless. <laughs> Stabbing two people to death in a fit of anger is pretty reckless. Um, fuck, that's all I got. It's <laughs> fucking. I was. I don't say, know if he means that or anything to know that because yeah. that was a pretty good argument. Um, <laughs> no, no, hey, yeah, short but sweet. He was a uh, OJ was acquitted. He was acquitted, so. and he also had an all-star also, team of... Doesn't mean it wasn't reckless. I he used to drive my motorcycle 150. Case, though, I didn't die. In doesn't a civil mean case, it wasn't he reckless. was found criminally responsible, though. He was in a civil suit. Yes. So, okay. Okay. Dave, who do you, what did you pick? I picked uh, Tim Horton. What about Tim Horton? Drinking and driving led to his death. Okay. 
Uh, he died on February 21st, 1974, after playing a game in Toronto against the, against the Leafs. He stops in at uh, the Tim Hortons head office in Oakville, where he calls his brother. His brother's like, he tells he's drinking. He tells Ron Joyce, the co-founder of Tim Hortons coffee shops and donuts, don't let him drive. Ron Joyce tries, maybe, kind of, but apparently lets him go anyway. And then there was some report at 4 a.m. by somebody right here in Burlington saying they saw a car going at incredible speeds down the QEW. Uh, right by. He then wasn't me. Wasn't you in 19, Usually me. 1974. You weren't even alive yet. Don't you tell me where I was. <laughs> 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 this is true, though. Uh, the cops actually uh, uh, saw him on the highway going so fast as well. They tried to catch him, but he was going so fast they couldn't even keep up with him. I read 160 kilometers an hour. 160 kilometers an hour. He, that's, um, that's nothing. I do more than that. He passed a curb on Ontario Street, right near St. Catharines. He lost control. He drove right into the median where he his tire caught uh, fire. He recessed the sewer, flipped several times before coming to a stop on its roof in the Toronto bound lanes. Now he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so this is a, a double story. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt and drinking and driving. Uh, he was ejected 200 feet from the car, and he was dead, dead. And he never got to see dead, the, dead. He never got to see the success. Dead, dead, dead. dead. Um, <laughs> dead, dead, dead. We, you can't throw a fucking rock in Canada now without hitting a Tim Hortons coffee shop, donut shop, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and most of those were built after 1974. Exactly. He never got to see it. That's why it's the tragedy. That's the, not really his that legacy. Much of a tragedy. They just sold the Burger King for fuckloads of money. Yeah, and he didn't get any of it. Ron Joyce dead. got a bunch of it. Yeah. Um, well, that worked out well for Ron Joyce then. Yeah. You know, well, I'm sure uh, Tim Hortons family mention, still got a bunch of money. Not like much of a tragedy. Not to mention, he, had four, he left behind a wife and four daughters upon his death. Oh, that is a tragedy. He was still playing hockey, so he was still an active sports player. He was an active sports player at the time of his death. Okay, and you know, it seems like seatbelts is like a recurring theme here. So we're gonna go right in. Uh, no, we're gonna. I bet you OJ wasn't wearing his seatbelt. I, I don't think he was. I, <laughs> I don't think he would need to. I think he, he could was, bounce off of something and he wouldn't hit it. He car. wasn't driving though. The, no, he the wasn't driving. Right? Al, he was in the back seat. Al Cowling was driving. I doubt he was wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> no, he did no. have a gun to the guy's face. He didn't have a seatbelt on. There was too much blood on it. Okay, so speaking of seatbelts, um, Jody, what did you pick? Dale Earnhardt. The senior. Huh? Senior. The senior, yes. Junior's still alive. Junior's still alive. As right. far as I know, because I don't really follow NASCAR. Yeah. The, the tragedy here is really, well, it's more of a reckless part that I was focusing on. I was like, what, what was reckless about it? Very. It's def it it's definitely a tragedy. Reckless. And I'll tell you if you'd shut the fuck up for me. <laughs> He was always an offensive driver, so he never had a defensive position while he was driving. He was always very offensive, always trying to, you know, cut everybody, you know, make sure he blocks everybody, uh, which actually realistically led to his demise because he was, um, um, sorry, who was it? Uh, I have it in the notes here. Uh, Michael Waltrip. Waltrip, uh, yeah. yeah. So Michael Waltrip. Um, Basically, he was quoted as saying, you know, he's running people all into the grass. He's running them into the boards. Like, he's doing all this crazy fucking reckless shit on this lap. And he's basically saying, you know, what the fuck is this guy doing? Um, the They believe that Earnhardt was actually really pissed off um, because of a little argument about who was going to drive. Um, Daryl Waltrip was the chap who was actually driving for the no, no, Mike. or did I fix it up oh Mike was Daryl was, was Daryl no he was doing the um the, like the play by play see I'm glad you knew more about I did I only watched it today so that's oh really I watched a bunch of I actually stuff. have seen it a couple times but the I is didn't this the script for the flash it is NASCAR so it is fucking more so. this is the most iconic moment in NASCAR so he it is, is the most know. iconic moment and it's a moment that will always be remembered as being a reckless um Anybody who's a real big fan, and when I looked through all of the information that I could find on this with the limited time span I had, everybody counted this as being a very reckless, stupid fucking thing that didn't have to happen. He ended up pushing everybody around, and somebody pushed him back. And what ended up happening is he went straight into the fucking wall. They pretty much, they feel that he died and came back, and then died again. So, like, um, but the whole point and the reason why I'm, I'm taking the reckless part as being the bigger part of this question is because it was a reckless thing. He was driving around like a complete ass. When you look at the videotape of it, the guy for the last couple of laps before that happened was acting like a total dick. 
Like he was like he was like soccer mom in a minivan, fucking dick. Like he was just wasn't watching anything, just jumping around every time somebody tried to get past him. The general rule of thumb is you don't rub, right? You're you're supposed to not rub. You you can rub a bit, but you know you're not really supposed to. He was just straight out. He was like laying on his fucking brakes to make sure people would hit him in the back, you know, stuff like that, just to piss people off. And what would end up happening was he would end up well slowing down anyway, not really breaking, uh, but slowing down and everything. And what ended up happening is somebody nailed him on the back, ended up. Ended up going on, I think it was like a 45 degree. Kind of went down and then, down and yeah, then back then up went again. Yeah. And ended up getting cliffed by another car as well, which happened to be one of the cars that was behind him at the time. And he owned that car too. Yeah, and he owned that car too. <laughs> which, which even makes it more reckless is because he's also endangering drivers of his same crew in the same, uh, his same <clears throat> outfit as well. I don't know what's more reckless than running out of your house and murdering two people. <laughs> 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 and then run around like, and also car. having no plan at that point. <laughs> yeah. Like, like plan is over. I just murdered two people. That's it. I'm done. That's my plan. But the one thing I will say to Dave's argument is, and the one thing that Dave picked up as you were talking was, he said, well, he wasn't quitted. There is no so firm what? proof that he did do it all. He was no. He was acquitted. He was technically if acquitted. If the glove does not fit, you must acquit. And well, ten of the I he had a fucking <laughs> great lawyer. And I'm not saying he didn't do it. He but wrote like, a book that said, "If I did it, if this I did is it, how it happened." I, but, but I didn't do it. He also wrote a book about how I'm going to find the real killers. Fucking great. That's, That's true. But the other thing that also bugs me about I also argument, I also. Rode a motorcycle down the 401 at 150 kilometers an hour. Reckless, but I'm not dead. This is true. So, it, But it's still reckless. True. So doing that is still reckless, but even though you, he was acquitted. Were, but were you blocking people that were trying to pass you at the time? Nobody was trying to pass me. No, exactly. In NASCAR, <laughs> it works a little differently. Uh, they are trying to pass you, because that's the whole name of the game. Um, Let's face it. Dave is, is anybody at NASCAR actively anyone. trying to murder? <laughs> what? Is out. Like, I'm not out. I'm going to let you guys talk. I'm even calling you out on this. It's that was terrible. the best reaction. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm out? <laughs> I didn't know I was out yet. <laughs> Dave's out, let's face it. But if you had to compare the difference between the two of them, the Dale Earnhardt, not only is it tragic because... He was is, out there still doing his job. This had nothing to do with OJ's job. Which well, proves my Dave point. Dave and Kevin's had nothing to do with their job. Well, I guess that's, he was driving. That's right. Back. Mine was, was the one that happened to a sports guy while he was in... That's not the question. The hey, the question was... Sports What's the most yours? reckless tragedy You're... related to a sports star? Which is true. true. That is the it's answer. True. Yeah. That's the question. Well, it's, uh, it's like Jeopardy. Right. Uh, Related to a sports <laughs> star. And, and, and come on, NASCAR is barely a sport. Well, the thing is... Uh, well, I would imagine that the Americans would disagree with you. I liked his choice. I'm not necessarily not on the same bench with you, but it is a sport by legal definition, and it is a sport that is one of the most viewed sports in America. So you can't really disargue that. In the South. Well, OJ had one of the b- biggest trials that was ever viewed yeah, in America. Absolutely. Yeah, in the absolutely. world. Absolutely. But I didn't say that OJ didn't play a sport. He's but, trying to tell me well, that That's not what my question is. I'm trying to say what was the most reckless and right out Kevin's well. hammering that point home the most. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely mine's reckless as hell. Yours is not nearly as reckless as mine. Drunk mine's driving right. and no seatbelt? Yeah. And Murdering two people. Okay, here, let me, let me solve something here for you. 1974. With no seat plan, Seatbelts weren't even mandatory. You not only were they not mandatory. How do you know? You were around. <laughs> I'm not fucking retarded. <laughs> the legislation for seatbelts didn't come in until the 80s. He should have known. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> he should have fucking known. That's your only argument. Like, yes, drinking and driving, obviously reckless. I agree with you on that. But not wearing a seatbelt was not actually not the fucking norm in mid-70s. Like, let's be honest here. It wasn't. When I mean, you're going 160 clicks an hour... Do you think anybody doing 160 clicks an hour was wearing a fucking seatbelt? Probably not. It's funny because both David Jody's guys were going about 160 clicks an hour. Weren't Mine wearing was seat belts, into a sport. Weren't wearing seatbelts. Yeah. Uh, Earnhardt apparently didn't wear a full helmet. He only wore nope. half a helmet. He wore a half one, yeah. So when, wore, like, apparently when he, he crashed... The you know he he went right into the steering wheel and yeah. it punctured his like chest and his it broke his neck basically. Yeah. But he also didn't commit a felony with no plan. He had no time. Mine was a felony in in the sense that it, you know he Here's evaded the DUI. police. There's Drinking and driving is not a felony. He evaded police. 
<laughs> when? What? What? The police ha- tried to chase him, and he got away. Oh, okay. I didn't know that part. Oh, he didn't open with that part. Now I might bring him back in the game. <laughs> well, I know it doesn't. That's, but anyway, well, that's he can't beat OJ because OJ... Murder two murdered. people. Let's face it. <laughs> maybe. This maybe. Is only, maybe. This is only a two-person argument. It really is. And you it's have to tell me why it's argument. more reckless than OJ. Because OJ made his whole life a fiasco OJ for the, the entire, entire world thing, to watch. The entire thing was done and orchestrated because OJ's a fucking idiot. All right? It's that simple. Dale Earnhardt was one of the greatest NASCAR drivers. He just decided that day to be a complete reckless asshole. And that's exactly what this conversation is about. It's about being reckless. OJ was a fucking idiot. That's all it was. It had nothing to do with being reckless. He was just an idiot. He, you can tell how stupid he is. Like, look at some of the answers he did during the trial. Fucking retarded. Okay? Dale Earnhardt was nothing close to retarded. And he was one of the best drivers and still continued to be one of the best drivers even after he was dead. Okay, let's face it. Don't, don't forget, after Tim Horton... Tim Horton had a fucking donut <laughs> empire. Fuck off, you're out. Anyway, so back to the real people here. Okay. Because I do concede that it is somewhat reckless, what he's saying. But somewhat reckless? It is somewhat <laughs> reckless. Somewhat reckless. It's mostly stupid, though. Understatement It's of mostly the stupid. stupid. It's That's stupid. what reckless is, doing stupid shit. Your guy knew the risks, okay? My guy did the risks. Your That's guy, the difference. Jumping on a moving train your guy. is both stupid and fucking reckless. <laughs> yes, but if we're, if we're judging just straight reckless, Dale Earnhardt was the most reckless out of all of your arguments because OJ also was fucking stupid. stupid to drive the way he did. So also oh, stupid. No, stupid. Tim Horton so argument was is more reckless. Same. Your guy Stop was... talking about Tim Horton. You're fucking out. No, you're I out. I told you, your guy out. was doing what he does for a living. Can you That's just say? Can you just officially that, kick like, him out so I don't have to hear him? I, I can't. I have to just I'm let this go on. All right. <laughs> um, but, anyway, I'm done. I've made my argument. Okay. You know I'm right. Let's just be honest. Like, like a hockey like player is, is reckless for his teeth falling out. He's not reckless. He knows the risks. Okay, I have to say, I watched documentaries on all three of your topics today. I didn't <laughs> really? watch the full documentary. Wow, watched... You do so much research. I, but, you do a lot of research. Uh, uh, just today I did. I, I admire that, by the way. And I, I think but you're I, the best host. I didn't watch the... Like, Everything, but I watched like a twenty minutes of the OG Simpson trial stuff. I watched I, I watched a bit of the Tim Horton thing for a couple minutes, but I could not stop watching the Dale Earnhardt thing. It's I fucking I reckless. I do it's not totally watch, reckless. But uh, well, in my defense, you don't actually get out to see him murder two people. No, <laughs> well, this is true. This is true. No, and the thing and the thing that was so bizarre about and he was Earnhardt, so reckless. His son took up his profession. He already was. His son was already. He second in that race. His inte- yeah, he was second in the race. There, <laughs> fuck nut. Yeah. Anyway, so, but he was better after that. <laughs> why, did, why didn't he retire? If it was such a tragedy to his whole family. Well, the thing that was really interesting about the race. It was a tragedy to his own family and his other. It didn't his stop him from racing anymore. Because it's a dangerous sport to begin exactly. with. Exactly. You know what else is dangerous? Drunk driving, but millions of people do that a year. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's okay. You know what isn't dangerous? Murdering two people when they don't have weapons. Uh, that's not very dangerous. He no. was acquitted. He was acquitted. I mean, I, yeah, and I Earnhardt keep saying that, but to be I actually, the book I mentioned, I read that book. Did you? Yes, and the book, basically, the whole tone of the book is, this is why the bitch deserved it. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> fucking basically what he wrote. I'm not <laughs> arguing whether or not OJ did it, because I think he did. Okay? You don't think but, he did. He fucking did. Oh, well, we know he did. <laughs> but let's be honest. We all know he did. But it's a lot of stupid. I think there's a ton of stupid in there. OJ is not a bright guy to begin with. He never was. And Earnhardt was a very bright man who just decided one day to be fucking completely... Tim Horton. Fuck off, Tim Horton. (laughs) All right, I'm deciding. I'm going to give it to Jody. Thank you. Like but it was close. Dave, I would have been happy. I was that. between Jody and Kevin. Yeah, as long as you weren't with Dave, I'd be I happy. wasn't with Dave because yeah, that was terrible. I, if David picked a hockey one, if he had picked the Danny Heatley one, I think that I would have been a good I one. Would, I, and that's originally what I thought of when I was picking the question. That, was like, a, that, that would, be, would actually be a really good. That argument. was really reckless. Didn't think of OJ at all, did you? No. I <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I forgot that he was a sports star because he was way before my time. And right. then he was also movies. He was too. a movie he was star. Yeah, he was in Naked Gun. Yeah. yeah. First Nick again. I think he was in the Both second one, too. Two. Was he in yeah. Not in third. Though. No, I think that no. trial was already going on at that point. Yeah. <laughs> 1995. Jeff, you're not, you're not much of a Leafs fan, just to say. No, he was a saber at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you suck. I like, right, I, like, I, like, I like his coffee and his donuts, though. Um, Actually, you know what? I tried the McDonald's 
uh, coffee the other day. It wasn't bad. Much better. Yeah, it's yeah. actually pretty good. Tim Hortons and I had the Mocha one. McDonald's like get the one where they put the chocolate in and shit. Yeah, or what? The where? Mocha one, like uh, the McDonald's, like coffee, uh, but they had like chocolate. Shit. There's something there. better. Actually, McDonald's about is not too bad for coffee. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. <laughs> and if you're listening, McDonald's, we would be more than happy to be sponsored. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With that rousing endorsement, yeah, that's not too bad. That's it's, not, <laughs> it's, it's better than Tim Hortons. It's better than Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons was a fucking DUI drunk. All right, we're done. <laughs> didn't murder anybody. Okay. <laughs> History, which is also always a long um, argument, which because it can go so many ways to argue with so many different ways. But I kind of wanted to, you know, stick true, to, uh, stay true to Canada. And talk about, you know, again, an icon. And I wanted to go with what is the most iconic figure in Canadian history. So, again, keywords, figure, icon, Canadian history. Okay? So, uh, this time we're starting with Dave. And I can't wait to see hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you already have a problem. <laughs> I know. I have no problem. No problem. Did you pick Tim Horton? No, I, I think not. that would have been hilarious if you. That would have been funny if you actually did pick Tim Horton. I actually, I picked Terry Fox. Oh, that's good. I know. Not that good. No, nah, that's good. No. Yeah. Um, okay, so one's on his side, one's not. Terry Fox. Uh, for those who don't know on the show, if you, you know, because I mentioned it to Jim, he called me right before the show, all right? And he was like, I, I told him all my answers leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Was he, he calling you about it? He actually he picked. Changed? He picked Dale Earnhardt as well. But what's up? He picked Dale Earnhardt. You know why? Because he's an American. Yeah, he he wouldn't know the Tim Horton one at all. Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. Well, he, I think he, some people. And and to his credit, he didn't know Terry Fox, but come on, Terry Fox. If you're a Canadian kid, you know Terry Fox. He was the um, you know he lost his leg to cancer in nineteen what it was eighty. And oh, was it that late? Oh, I thought yeah. it was in the seventies, but uh, well, like 1979, 1980. Yeah, uh, was diagnosed with cancer in his leg. He was amputated. He decided that you know he could run across Canada on just one leg, yeah. and, he, and his, his goal was if if every Canadian at that time there was about thirty million Canadians. He was like, if every Canadian gives one dollar, that's thirty million dollars for cancer research. Maybe just maybe I can cure cancer. And he he started in Newfoundland, and he got all the way to um, to Ontario before you know the cancer spread more, ended up killing him. But the Terry Fox run is his legacy. Um, it is now the largest one-day fundraiser for cancer research in the world and has raised over $600 million in, in his name for mm-hmm. cancer research. Yep. When they did the Greatest Canadian uh, competition, I don't know if you guys remember this on CBC mm-hmm. years and years ago, talking about who was the most iconic Canadian. He, uh, he actually placed second. Now, Tommy, I mean, du- Tommy, Tommy Douglas, Tommy Douglas yeah. ended up getting, I don't know if either of you have Tommy Douglas, but it can be a great debate. Was that for influential or iconic? It was the it was the greatest, greatest Canadian, 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 greatest Canadian, Canadian sort of spelled it. Right. Who was the greatest Canadian? Which is kind of hard to really put into. Yeah, like what does it what mean? What kind of category In- influence is that? Or great, well, it's just icon. like when you say what's the greatest movie. Because we're talking, but we're talking about icon here. We're talking yeah. about an icon. That's the question. Well, just the fact that his name is yeah. on the largest one day fundraiser for cancer research in the world, um, and that every Canadian knows. The story of Terry Fox, I think, makes him the most iconic. I think he's more of an icon in Canada than Tommy Douglas is. I think more people know Terry Fox's name that. than right? Tommy totally. Douglas' name. Like Tommy Douglas, you go, well, he's the guy who brought in healthcare, but basically it's healthcare versus Terry Fox, not Tommy Douglas per se. Tommy Douglas being the father of Shirley Douglas, who's the mother of Keith or Sutherland, and mm-hmm. um, you know, there's that, that whole legacy, but. And Tommy Douglas, I, I almost consider picking. You know, watch out for one little man with an idea. But I think the courage and the spirit and how how Canadian Terry Fox really was, mm. and what he tried to do is much is more significant in the long term than Tommy Douglas. Tommy Douglas was part of a movement. He was sure he was the leader of that movement. But Terry Fox kind of like really made cancer research a big deal when in a time when it ne- wasn't necessarily a thing yet for Canada to own, and it became our thing. Okay, that's it. That's my argument. All right, Jody. Well, it's really kind of hard to follow Terry Fox. Um, I'm not even going to bother. Nobody wants to talk shit about Terry Fox. I don't want to talk shit about Terry Fox. (laughs) So I'm going to mostly just talk shit about Dave. He was 18 than I've ever. Uh, No, in in all serious, no, I I agree with that. Um, I picked Trudeau, and I'll tell you why. Why? Number one, longest running prime minister, changed a lot of things. Uh, uh, Curtin, what? Diefenbaker was the Diefen- longest run. One of the longest one, I said. 
No, oh, one so, of them. Oh, yeah, Sorry, yeah, I two hear, terms. I didn't, I didn't two, catch that. Had two terms, too. Yeah. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> unless I said that wrong, but um, that's what I No, mean. I just... <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the longest. Um, major events during his term include the creation of the Official Languages Act of 1969, which, quite honestly, I don't fucking like, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but it was... It is an important part of our heritage, let's face it. What's that? No, go ahead. I'm... Uh, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms in 1982, as well, uh, which in the legal independence of Britain for the signing of the Constitutional Act in 1982, as well, um, which basically has. He was the guy who managed to get us away from British rule. Essentially, he he was the guy who said, "Okay, well, we're gonna start stripping down all of this government and make it ours. It's 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 Canada's. It's not the colony of Canada. I guess is a good way of saying it." Um, also, the first uh, prime minister in history to appoint a woman in key positions, such as the um, Speaker of the Senate, Speaker of the House, uh, and Governor General. So, the first woman Governor General was because of that. Um, he was also a Minister of Justice as well, um, and he was also the leader of the opposition for a short time as well. Um, he was first elected to the House of Commons in 1965 before uh, he entered public life, and then he raised, uh, he was also a practicing law as well. Um, Overall, I just think his his contributions to to Canada cannot be overseen. Like you, yes, Terry Fox, and I'm not going to talk shit about Terry Fox because I think what he did was important. But I think a lot of the things that Trudeau has done greatly changed our country. Terry Fox greatly changed a cause. Granted, didn't change a country. And I think it changed the country to the way of, like, let's say, you know, being able to know more about the cause, but didn't change the country in the way that, for instance, Trudeau would have. And I think that's what, to me, is what an iconic figure of Canada should be, is somebody who can change the landscape of the country. Which okay. is what he did. Kevin. All right. Before I start, I said that Diefenbaker was the longest running. No, Mackenzie King. Mackenzie King. I had that yes. All right. Who did Trudeau have to go to to get that charter here? Yeah, Queen speak, Elizabeth II. Speaking of British rule. <laughs> That's who I pick. Queen Elizabeth II. She's not even Canadian. That's she's not, not the question. Most iconic figure in Canadian history. And she's on all of her money. Doesn't so say the most valid. iconic Canadian in history. She is on every piece of money. Why is she every more, piece of money? Why is she more iconic than any other monarch we've had? Because she is literally an icon on the money. <laughs> right, but <laughs> so is her father before her and her grandfather before yeah, her. When she That's dies, fine. all the money will change over to Charles. And then, and then we have Charles Ugly Mug on the next. But she happens to be the longest. Longest running. running. She has been. I think she's been fucking queen since Jesus. <laughs> like it's been fucking forever. Oh, we had to throw the Jesus in. We had to get the Jesus in this episode. And for the record, Jesus's boy band was terrible. Oh, yeah, that was a good point. That's all I got. I kind of mailed that one in. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good argument against what I've said, though. Or mine. Yeah. No. Uh, yours is only. Dave and Jody one. are fighting for this one. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth II. Granted, she's an icon and she's on her money, but like a literal icon. Not really Canadian. She is really an icon. Uh, That's not the question. Canadian, you know. Icon. Not, you know, I'm saying... Trudeau has a lot of, like, yeah, he did a lot of significant things for Canada, but he also has a lot of blemishes on his record. Like what? Like the oil scandal, like the the, um, the, the Night of the Long Knives, mm -hmm. uh, like his 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 wife that was... He also had a very long term, so you're going to have scandal. It's just going to happen. There's name one prime minister that we had that didn't have scandal. Did Harper have a scandal? Harper? Oh, tons. <laughs> Are you even asking that question? Well, like, I mean, like Trudeau. Pearson Trudeau has nothing thing that's really Pearson had no Like, there's yeah. been a lot of mouth breathing about him. But right. Louis Saint Laurent certainly did not. But even if he, right. even if he has had scandal, the the question is icon. Icon doesn't necessarily mean positive or negative. So I don't understand why. Also, you're our first this. prime minister I think was that, here, giving here's bribes what, yeah. <laughs> and drinking. What I'm getting at even today, yeah, two Trudeau is a he's a polarizing figure, right? I think if you're liberal, you love him. If you're conservative, you probably fucking hate uh, Trudeau for the most part. I think I'm neither, and I think Trudeau is a great, a great prime minister. Okay, well you're neither, but like, okay, so coming from our family, where our mom's side all conservatives, our dad's side all liberals, 
And generally, they hated Trudeau with a passion, except for maybe the FLQ crisis, where they ended, that's where they kind of backed him up because he was taking out terrorists, French separatist terrorists. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that uh, Trudeau, well, that's really the whole reason the Meech Lake Accords were brought up by Mulroney, because there was all this bullshit that was involved with the patriation of the Constitution. And that is probably Trudeau's greatest accomplishment, but it has a lot of fucking... <laughs> Um, asterisks on it. it, it the reason but he's we, still an icon because you know this much about him. The reason we've had referendums since then is because <laughs> is because Quebec got royally screwed over in how that well, constitution was I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, Terry Fox probably would have had a few asterisks too if he had lived beyond 18. Yes. Was he only 18 when he died? Oh, yeah. Pretty oh, close. He died Somewhere in around there. Yeah. Died in 81. I, didn't, I thought he was in his 20s. But Started the run uh, in 80. Died I, in 81. Again, I don't know a ton about Terry Fox. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I learned it I don't, a while I don't ago. Think I that, about I don't it. think that Terry Fox being popular There is, isn't really is a, a lot to thing. know about Terry Fox. I mean, he was awesome, but there's not that much material. There's not there. There's, yeah, not, yeah, there's, there's not much not, there. There's not so. much to know. Yeah, yeah. Is he an icon? I think he is an icon, but to a lesser degree than Trudeau. Trudeau to me is too too polarizing, too controversial. He's still um, an icon, though. If you ask your kids who not. Terry Fox is and who Trudeau is, they, they know they, both. They they okay, but who we're getting, you know? But and my, they, I would also equate. My kid doesn't know. They do know. My kid doesn't know yeah. history, but he knows Terry Fox because everyone at school has to do the Terry Fox run every fucking year. Right. Right. That's, well, that's obviously the main reason why you should win. Then. Well, he's more iconic, and he's more he's more relevant today. Despite he's iconic to. He's, he's been dead a lot longer than Trudeau. <laughs> so <laughs> Trudeau had a lot more time. That to, was not me. <laughs> Trudeau, I don't know. Trudeau's not to me. You're fucking grasping now. No, I can't God. even believe that you're. Wow. No, I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> you know who lived the longest? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth. II. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Terry Fox is important, but Terry Fox is important for one thing. Trudeau, whether you loved him, you hated him, he not only changed, he changed everything he did, regardless of whether you think it's right or wrong, regardless of change? somebody else. What do you mean, what did he change? Tell me what Trudeau changed. I just gave you a fucking list. Do you want to read what's it again? That, number one. What's number one? Number one is probably going to be the, um, what do they call the act? Sorry. Just give me a second. Are you talking the Charter of Rights and Freedoms? Yeah. Bringing that? Oh, well, yeah. When the, the he, legal independence. You didn't... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you talked about the legal The independence is, was a big one for us. Okay. Um, it's, you know, and also the fact that we're, he, he broke the, the gender line when it came to high areas. Like, whether you think that's important or not doesn't really matter. It's, it's still an iconic figure. He's a figure that has helped people over and over again. I like Trudeau. He's also one that has fucked over people. Don't get me wrong. But either way, icon doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. If you if this was if this question was who's the most iconic prime minister, maybe you have an argument. But overall, as Canadian, I don't think so. Okay, he did go with the guy that created our constitution. Yep, he did go. The with one that you actually still enjoy to this day. I got more information than you. It's only been around for thirty about one Trudeau. Year than I've been alive. I got more information out of you about yep. Trudeau and than I did about me. Terry Fox. That's right. I have There's to give it to Jody. I'm That's sorry. Right. Because you know more about him. He is more about him. Which means... That's a tough one. This, well, this next That's category tough. is going to be tough for Dave because... Yes, I, I don't like... Well, the bigger problem right now is that I'm automatically in the speed round now. Jody's in the speed know. round. I, and prob I probably would have gone. I don't, I don't even understand how I lost that because I had more shit to throw at Trudeau. <laughs> but, but shit doesn't constitute whether or not he's an icon. You actually proved my point better he's a probably than I did. He's a galvanizing figure. It's going to keep make, going. Does not make him an icon. All right. Well, anyway, let's I wish make I could this. come up right now with something about Queen Elizabeth. That would just fucking kill everybody. <laughs> I got more information anyway, about Shut up. I won. Don't be a bitch. Okay. So for the wild card this week, <laughs> I went a different way. And basically... Dave or, Ke or Kevin have to win this point to, you know, to one, gain some traction. But if on. I win this, they have to do another question to yeah, figure we, out who's going to come with you. Yes, Correct. and that's going to be difficult. And I think you have probably advantage. I don't know how much uh, PC games uh, Kevin uh, plays. I think Kevin oh, has an advantage, too. Okay. I forgot the question. But uh, I, I think you guys are going to love Dave. Just Dave's out of curiosity, answer. is Caputo's Dave? Uh, yeah, Caputo's Kevin. Shit, you actually have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does it still say Caputo at the top? Yeah, it still yeah. says Caputo. Awesome. It says Caputo. <laughs> I've been on a ton of podcasts, but I still don't get my name on the score sheet. <laughs> uh, mine's awesome. permanent. It's always been on that. <laughs> oh, it's always here. It's always been there. <laughs> 
Okay, so I went with... At least I know where I stand. What is the best video game for the PC format? So a game you play on your computer. I was actually surprised to get this question from you, because I didn't actually think you were a PC kind I of gamer I used to guy. be. I was a gamer for a while, but I don't, I don't really do it anymore. anymore. No. Cool. Um, but it's very time consuming, and a lot of these it games is. are time consuming. But I think you guys picked, like, like aside from your choice, I think uh, Jody uh, are just kind of fun games to play where you can pick up and put down yes. um, whenever you want. So mine's a bit more. My, my, but my favorite answer was Dave's answer, and, and I would like to see what he brings to the table for this one because right. I can't wait to. To be quite honest, I'm not going to work very hard on this because I've already won. Right. I'm I don't, already going. I don't know because I don't know a lot about. I your already game. Go into the I've never played your game. I've played. Oh, really? I've played both of Kevin and Dave's games. Well, I have a very popular game. Is uh, it The Sims? No. Queer. Hilarious. We picked The Sims. If we picked The Sims, I would have hit him. I picked Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That was a good game, though. I think that I never played it on PC though. I played it on the console where it originally came out two years prior. <laughs> this is all about the PC console, right? Yeah, PC. Counts. You gotta it's play it on, on your computer. No, no Xbox, no PlayStation. Uh, but you and can play it on your what PC. What made me really think about this was that I played this uh, earlier part of the 2000s. Like this was, a, I had this on my laptop all through college. I played a ton of this game. It was voiced by um, uh, Ray Liotta as the voice of the Tom, Tony. Yeah. Okay, I can't um, remember all the characters. Tony. Names, but, uh, yeah, some of the effort. But basically, the movie, the whole game, it feels like a movie. But the whole game is Scarface. Yeah, like everything really in is. the game feels like Scarface. <laughs> it really is. It was set in the '80s, like all the '80s music, getting in the cars. They took that uh, great engine that was established on the first Grand Theft Auto Three, which was the first time we had that three-dimensional kind mm -hmm. of look of Grand Theft Auto. Right. And and just gave it this amazing, fun Scarface-like story, and with with a great voice cast and. Um, and when I when uh, then I saw it was like it could be downloaded years later on my iPhone and my iPad, so I downloaded it and I'm trying to play it with the iPad, not the same because it's not on the PC. Mm -hmm. You know, it played even better on the PlayStation. <laughs> Just saying. No, it's wait. No, it's, I I actually took the day off work for that game to be released. I took the day off work and went down to EB for Games. City. Yeah, and bought it. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, in terms of like a critical acclaim, uh, it's it received uh, nine point seven out of ten from IGN, nine point six out of ten from Gamespot, five out of five from GamePro, ten out of ten from official US PlayStation magazine. Uh, that was the PlayStation version, though. Right. True. It's still the same game. But it's, it is the same game. Uh, you know, it's it's sold millions of copies all over the world, not not including all the pirated shit. And I think it still holds up today as one of the the best um, game stories ever. And it was way better on the piece on the PC version than it was on any other platform. Why is right. that? Hmm? Why is that? Just because the interactive controls lended themselves better to it. Okay. All Just right. the having the mouse was way better than using like a joystick for me. Okay. Interesting. Okay, uh, we'll go to Kevin, and we'll, we'll right. have Jody go last on this one. As keeping with who I am, I picked one that is old. Uh, and much like the 66 Batman. <laughs> is this Pong? No. Yes. But, no, your not game, Pong. but your game, I will say, probably Pong has the best game. legacy out of all the games. Absolutely. I picked Wolfenstein. Oh. Because I it's one this. of the very first 3D <laughs> games that I can remember. Mm -hmm. it, it it rocketed the first person shooter into existence. Now to be clear, you're talking about Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. There was actually a game previous to that. Yeah, that doesn't count. Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah, no. Right. Wolfenstein 3D. Wait, is this which one is But this it was based on precisely. The one where you run around and shoot Nazis it's and dogs. It's the first first person shooter game ever. Yes. Oh yeah, but it was like so like and then when you awesome. Watch it, when you watch <laughs> it, right, when you yeah, watch it for the word awesome. <clears throat> and it like you'd hear like those drums go like, yeah, yeah. Yes. it's so iconic. <laughs> the done. new, the new fucking Wolfenstein game has a mini game in it that is playing yeah. levels of yeah. the original it's Wolfenstein. Fun. Mm -hmm. the, there was there was nothing better as a young kid than and everybody that played this that's my age will remember this is putting it on I am Death Incarnate and then just trying to live. No, typing in IDDQD. Mm -hmm. 
and IDKFA for invincibility and all the fucking weapons and just mowing down Nazis and dogs <laughs> through the whole fucking thing. <laughs> it, this game started everything in the first person shooter and it still holds up. I will still play this fucking game today. Just, you know, it's light on story. You're escaping. There's Nazis. You have to shoot them. It's kind of like a <laughs> you didn't need anything some else dogs, though. but you didn't need a fucking you know, story it, in this. It's kind of like a precursor to Nazi zombies, isn't it? You know, from Call of, with Call of Duty. Yeah, it's like, no idea about. Uh, it's a precursor. <laughs> it's a precursor to all that stuff. It really yeah, precursor, precursor, precursor kind of, is everything. I mean, any everybody sure, loves Doom, but like Doom was basically Wolfenstein with some aliens and weird right. weapons. It, it's. Wolfenstein 3D was the fucking game. It was even one of the first games I've ever seen that could be modded and skinned. Yeah, I modded it when I was younger. Mm, fucking Barney. That was the best mod ever. Yeah. <laughs> you could fucking get the Barney mod, and then you were running around shooting fucking Barneys with a fucking chain gun. It was awesome. There's still a modding community for that game. It was fucking awesome. Sadly. It was just awesome. Nary? Yeah. Jody, what do you pick? I'm busy playing Wolfenstein. You're playing Wolfenstein. <laughs> So here, I want to hear. I want to hear it. Hold on, I'm just trying to get it booted up here. Give me a second. I want to hear those sound effects. I actually have it bought for iOS. So, <laughs> this is fucking awesome. This is fucking awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. After you yeah, see, look at this. Look at this right here. Oh I'm yeah. So, I'm sorry. I remember that. That's my city. Awesome. <laughs> I remember this. Oh, I, that oh, game oh. started it all. Fuck, Shoot the Nazi. Fuck you, you little cock sucking Nazi. You were gonna yeah, have to we're stopping the oh. fucking podcast. Of All right, we okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's how awesome that. All right, is. can I finish? Can I finish? All right. You got something better than that? Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm kind of pissed off. I didn't. Know <laughs> <laughs> I picked the very iconic, very story-driven first-person shooter, Half-Life Two. Half-Life Two. It was one of the only games I remember where. It was probably one of the first games I remember where people were lined up to go buy it when it coming out on PC. I've never seen anything like that before. I remember going by Future Shop when it was on like, you know, uh, you know where I guess JYSK is or whatever, um, where Future Shop used to be. And there was a fucking lineup for a fucking PC game. It made no sense to me. It was just, it was... It was so odd. Mm. But the story itself, and I know that you haven't played it, um, yeah. but the first one was pretty fun, but it was an old engine, and it kind of looked dated to begin with when you when you played it. Um, the second one was fantastic, and people are still to this day using the engine that was built for Half-Life 2 to do, like, Gary's Mod and all that di different shit. The, the game itself, the engine was fantastic. There was so much shit that you could do with it. You could blow up fucking walls. You could, you could crack open heads and shit like that. There was just so much fun stuff with it. It was a really good storyline. Uh, anybody who's not familiar with Half-Life, it's basically, you know, we made this thing, it fucking teleported in shit, and we're fucked. That's basically, <laughs> that's basically the premise. There wasn't much of it. Uh, even, uh, well, it wasn't as less of a storyline as Wolfenstein, but that was pretty much it. Um, but overall, it was just one of those games that you could put your headphones on, you could grab your mouse, you could get your keyboard ready, and you would be lost for hours on it. Mm. It was a really good story-driven game. Um, you could sit there, you could play it, uh, play it nonstop. There's so many mods for it. The online community is still running on it. They're still using the engine for a ton of shit. Um, and overall, I just think it was a really, it was, um, for lack of a better term, a very iconic game for PC. But I will concede that I think Wolfenstein is still a... It, I, I only got it one, has a better heritage. I only got one thing to say. We're doing a podcast. These guys are supposed to be arguing with me. And they stopped doing what they were doing and went, oh. I'm going back to Wolfenstein. And they... If that's how much joy that game brings. Here, you Nazi bastard. Are you playing Wolfenstein 2, Dave? No. <laughs> no, I was thinking about buying it, though. I can tell you right now. What the hell? I don't even know what they're saying, but I don't care. You gotta tell me why Vice City is better than Wolfenstein. You can't. You can't. <laughs> and this is an old game we're talking about. Well, Who cares? It's still mine, fun as fuck. Mine, yeah. mine has... Oh, shit! It's the dogs! Mine... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> mine has on, a story. You know... It's true. Mine has a, gr a great story. And it is a good story. Uh, I was just reading. Burgerwitz has to escape from a castle <laughs> with Nazis. They're very, done. They're very different. <laughs> That's all you need. Not Come only on. that, but how many? I was reading been? like the plot here, and I was like, oh yeah, I, I was really getting back into this game. Like 
Tommy Versetti, a former loyal member Versetti, of the Corelli family. He's released in 1986, 15, serving 15 years for killing 11 members of the Har- in the Harwood district of Liberty City in early 1971, earning him, earning him the nickname the Harwood Butcher. Tommy's old boss. Do we really need to keep going on this? We know you have a better storyline. Okay, I got a better storyline. I'm, go- definitely I'm has just going story. on the joy. He doesn't really have a storyline. I'm yeah. going <laughs> on the joy that that, bring, but that, that game brings people to right. play. But... Do you want, Vice Even City today. brought me a ton of joy. So what's the actual phrasing of the question? Because at this point, I think I'm more of a judge. What is the best game for the best video game for the PC format? Oh, see, that's pretty open ended, though. It is. It is. It's totally open. Do you know what I, 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 when I look back at the different time periods, I look at like the '80s, and I really feel like like I was I was just a kid through it, but I really feel like it was like a gritty time. Or just like everything about it was a little bit darker, a little bit meaner. I think it would have to do with what year were you, did you say born? Say the '80s. Yeah. What year were you born? Not the music, for sure. Not the music. <laughs> uh, 83. 83? Yeah. So, I, I, like, yeah, I was only a kid, but just looking back at all the movies and, like, the subject matter of the time, especially stuff that was set in the cities, seemed like the city was, like, this really scary, mean, criminal place full of druggies and crackheads. And, what's yeah. more frightening than fucking Nazis, though? I'll tell you Maybe what's more frightening. A castle full of Barbies <laughs> that you have to escape from. <laughs> I don't there know if Jody go. wants to fight Dave in this final round. He's getting these, you know, he's arguing for Kevin. I am arguing for Kevin. Because he's playing the game. fucking <laughs> game that I picked. It's it's the game, the game, game was what's the best game, right? It's true. Yeah, I said, what is the best game? Yeah, for yeah, the record, true. the iOS version is actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, my, my, that game is so simple. It's like, actually, it's like comparing Pong to, like... It's uh, not Kong simple, was though. It's game. difficult, and that's why typing in those codes after you've been killed so many fucking times, mm. typing in those codes is so satisfying, because then you just take out all that fucking rage. I, I, I remember using losing. all the codes in Vice City, though. I used to make my cars fly. I used to make all kinds of crazy shit happen. Like, that was... Like, I used to make all... I remember one time, we used to have this game... Yeah, but it's open world. You go do what you want. That You fucking have to play that game to play that We had this game about how many police stars you could get on you. Because, you know, in, like, in the games where for if you get, like, one level, you get, like, a one star. Uh, and then, like, if you get, like, the military after you, eventually it's, like, six stars. Well, so, certainly today, games are more complicated. So, but, but... But even you, your face lit up when you saw did, that did fucking have, game uh, on his iPad. I did. Because it's been so long. <laughs> Nostalgia but, thing. But, Nostalgia is powerful. But, but, yeah. but I, my, my eyes lit up when I also... Pulled. But Vice City was also pretty fucking good. And I've played Vice City recently. I what, will say that. What do you think is a better game, Joey? Between the two? Yeah. They both are good, though. That's the thing. Yeah, like, it's, but it's hard like, to judge them because they're different They're times. very they're different. They're completely different times. Yeah. And if you're going for a story-driven, immersive world, it's fucking definitely Vice City. Right. Um... But if you're just looking for just straight out fucking Nazi killing with the occasional dog, fucking you got Wolfenstein. <laughs> well, a, lot, a lot of people did that with Grand Theft Auto too, where they would yeah. just you know go fuck around. Like there's a lot of people that would just fuck around in Grand Theft Auto, and I used to do the same. Like, lots of lots what, of Easter eggs in fucking. When I look uh, at that game, I feel like I'm, I'm ten years old. Like that's kind of the walls that you have to press everything. and get the secret. But, it's a, and but nostalgia isn't necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people no. like the nostalgia and. Everybody you know, plays Wolf. Everybody that plays Wolfenstein fucking loves it. I fucking Kids love bought fucking Wolfenstein game. on my iPad just so I could play it. I kind of wanted to show it to Eamon, but I also want to show Vice City, but he's not old enough yet. It's an adult right. game. Right. It is an adult Yeah, and killing Nazis is totally fucking acceptable uh, at well, any age level. For some reason, it's not, it's <laughs> it like, is. Uh, no, it is. My parents never. For the record, no, for no, the no. record, these are pixel zombies, and it's okay. <laughs> oh, I got like a you game. got a tough choice, Joe. I, I have a really tough choice. One, I don't man. know who to pick. I, I, right now you're tied. His choice is strong too. I don't know who to. All right, let me, let me let me solve this. Let me solve this quickly. What is the best character in your game? Tommy Versetti. What's the best character in your game? The fucking last guy with the huge chain guns that you can't beat. Oh, the Nazi with, guy. Yeah, the huge the fucking, fucking Hitler. Guy. He was Hitler. No, it wasn't Hitler. Are you sure? Well, I don't think so. I'm going to have to look that up now. I think that was Hitler. All right, well. It's so fucking hard to make it to the last guy. I would even say, which which oh, game man. do you get bored of quicker, Jody? Uh, if I had to be honest, I'd yeah. probably get bored with Wolfenstein quicker. I have to give it to Dave then, because that's right. that's the thing to me is, what game is a better game to get immersed into, to have fun with? If that's the case, then Half-Life 2 should have fucking been. 
Yeah, but I never Because I would play Half Life Two <laughs> way longer than I'd play fucking Vice City. Alright. Alright. <coughs> Does that mean Kevin's out? Kevin's uh, out. You get Kevin's Dave. actually out for once? It was tough. Oh, so I get to beat Dave this but time. Kevin okay, won the first enough. round, and then it just he couldn't. He couldn't win. All right. All right, we're on to the speed round. Speed and round. Our two, we gar- should have you know, champions here are Jody and Dave. So it's bound to be entertaining what? and filled with scoffs. And uh, it'll be mostly uh, just me making fun of Dave <laughs> and his sexual preferences. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's up three to two on me. He's up three to two on you. Yeah, which so means I'm already up one. You know, you clinched it with the you know the Vice City last uh, at the end with the wild card win, which is unlikely for Dave to win that, especially against two computers. And for the record, especially I'm... against the best game ever fucking made, <laughs> Wolfenstein. And I, I will. I have a little bit of remorse because I had to answer the question that you gave me honestly because I mm-hmm. believe in that it's right. fair. But honestly, I still think that Wolfenstein should have won that. No, well, I didn't. So but it's, uh, there we go. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. It's fine. Dave had passion for a game he didn't really play very much, <laughs> which I thought was pretty. I played a lot of that game. Right, right. It was like the only game. I, I'm not a big gamer, but right. that I was a lot of passion for my game. I think that, that speaks testament to it. That you That's know, true. for a guy who doesn't like games all that much, he he argued the shit out of a game he played. <laughs> he did. <laughs> anyway, okay, so. We're going to go to tiebreakers The new here. Wolfenstein game's good. And I yeah. didn't necessarily go, you know, one or the other here. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have to think of your own answer as far as the, the context or category of what I provide. So right. it might take a couple seconds for you guys to come up with your answer. Yeah. But I'm willing to wait, like, you know, 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. So okay. This, this isn't a Can one. Can you achieve anything okay. in 10 seconds, Dave? Not a one or the other. It's sometimes it's not so so. I think I have a couple here that are one or the other, but really most of them are think for yourself, basically. Right. Yeah, it's, you're fucked. It's on the top of your, off the top of your head, and that's what kind of makes it difficult. Um, All right, let's just slaughter Dave quick. Let's okay. Do All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. see. Dave, we'll see. Know, Dave's, like, hungry. Dave's hungry. He's hungry I'm like hungry like the wolf. And you were hungry like the wolf last time. <laughs> <laughs> and where did that get you? Okay, so. Movies. We're gonna go in order again in our category order. What is the best Harry Potter movie? <laughs> is none an answer? Sure. No, I'm not gonna use that. Uh, I have to think about it. Oh, that's why I'm willing to give you ten seconds. I'm, I'm sure as shit glad that I didn't get into the speed. Yeah, because Ashley would have had your balls. Because swear to God, if she listens to this and I picked the wrong movie, that's oh, it. That would I have been been fucking done. Wait, <laughs> the good news is Candace doesn't listen to this because she thinks we're all full of shit. Uh, uh, no, so wait, I can I, answer it anything. I, I'm going to say Goblet of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just going to say the first one because he's fucked. We, we, don't, we don't even... I don't even know if that's the right answer or not. Just... The, f- <laughs> the it's just the delivery the conviction that you have. It's like awesome. Like I'm surprised he didn't like whip it out I and go goblet of fire bitches. <laughs> boom! I can't believe he picked fucking goblet of fire. Though. I'm gonna I pick mean, the first one. Okay. All right. So oh, Dave, you're picking a sorcerer's stone. Uh, it's actually a philosopher's stone, stone in Canada. You fucking commie. Yeah, sorcerer's stone. In it's America. only sorcerer's stone in America but the because queen they don't calls, understand what philosopher. The queen is. calls it sorcerer's stone. Yeah. Well, she's also <laughs> old and she's on her money. Um, Do I go first? But she is an icon. You pick Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Goblet of Fire is the best movie of Why? the Harry Potter series because. It it really opens up the wizarding world uh, more so than the other ones. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> what? No, it opens up the wizarding world. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. It's hard for me to hear a grown man say that. <laughs> That's what the shock was to me. It has. I, I, well, I, I have a, I have the hiccups now because of it. To my credit, <laughs> I've watched a lot of the Harry Potter uh, world. I know a lot about it. I've read the you wikis did? extensively. I actually own my own wand. I, 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 a big part of it. Here's the thing. I own fucking six of them. Uh, yeah, you didn't seem phased by that. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I got kids and a wife. I own a ton of Harry Potter When I first wands. meet people, when I make new friends, I haven't done this with you guys yet, but I like to give people this quiz that so I can find out what, uh, what wizarding house you should belong in, what Hogwarts house. Oh, oh my I, God. I, I happen to be a Gryffindor. Uh, you know, Jeff's, Jeff's taking the test. He's a Hufflepuff. And he even, and I, I swear to God, I hate that I know this, he even said it right. He didn't say, I'm in Gryffindor, he said, I'm a Gryffindor. 
Apparently that's fucking right. We were at fucking Disney and Ashley was all over me. <laughs> fucking, no, oh, that girl knew how to say it. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> go- go- Goblin of Fire um, I hate that I know is this. the first appearance <laughs> as Ralph Fiennes as Voldemort. Okay. It, uh, it, has, it also has um, the return of, who is it? Um, oh, Peter, uh, Peter Pettigrew. Uh, from from the last one, which from Azkaban, from a- Prisoner of this Azkaban. This is the fifth movie. Yeah, this is the fifth movie. Is it the fifth movie? Yeah, yeah I guess it is. It's after Azkaban, it, and, and it's got it's got the tri wizarding cup. So you have. The, I can actually. I have that shit too. In my I can own, hear like, my so. balls shriveling up from how you're making this sound. Yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> I actually think I'm growing tits. More of them. <laughs> You're gonna grow with like total, well, total, I already have some because I'm kind total of total recall. You're gonna grow, like, grow a third one. Fuck if I could get a third <laughs> one, that'd be awesome. Um, like just the Triwizarding Cup with the the French school and the Eastern European school when they show up, and the whole um, and there being the two Hogwarts champions. One's a Hufflepuff, one's a Gryffindor. Um, with the, it's got the kid from Twilight. What's his name? Um, Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Well, that's certainly worth it. Is, uh, Cedric Diggory. Right, and uh, what I love about this movie is the ending when Cedric Diggory gets killed when they get the port key in the in the in the competition, and then they end up you know in front of Voldemort and <laughs> you know oh wow like like to me this movie has the most it just has the most turns and twists to it you know it starts off with like sh- uh, showing off the. Um, the uh, sorry, it's, 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 I'm gonna lost the the game. They they're on the brooms. Uh, Quidditch. Quidditch. It starts off with the Quidditch World Cup, right, and then moves to the uh, Tri Wizarding Cup, and then ends up in in that graveyard oh, with, right. with Voldemort. Where Al Fiennes makes his debut as Voldemort with no and fucking flash nose. Flash comes in. Yeah. If, if, if flash comes, <laughs> it's if, got that guy imp- imp- impersonating Moody. Right. Okay. Right, and then he reveal he reveals it's one of the it's one of the Death Eater guys. Right. Right. I think it's just it's 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 one it's one of the most well crafted stories in the Harry Potter pantheon. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. That's a sentence I never uh, thought. Okay. <laughs> well. <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> from a grown man. From a grown man. I have heard that sentence from my wife. But <laughs> what, what, what would your wife say? Do you know what, what, would what she the say? best movie is? Yeah. I have no fucking idea. Okay, well, most of the time on all these lists, all of them, I think she would say. And neither of them picked it, and so it, does, it doesn't really pertain to Joey's answer. Uh, and I think my choice would have been Prisoner of Azkaban. I think that's the best movie. But anyway, Jody, what do you? What do you? Why Sorcerer Stone? Four I saw the first one. You saw the first one. Yeah, I saw the okay. first one. I didn't hate it. It wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? It's it's the movie that started it all. And that would be more important. What I really remember about Goblet of Fire <laughs> is that it... I would also like to state... Everything, that, apparently. I would also, <laughs> I time, I would also like to state on... Re- yeah, I had... Like, you had fucking 30 minutes. <laughs> I think I can have at least a minute. Thank you. Uh, I also just want to state, plain and simple... I like women. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to watch Harry Potter movies because I was too busy fucking. Uh, and past that, that's pretty much where I'm at. But um, just give them the fucking point. It's fucking Harry Potter and the guy probably owns the shirt. <laughs> All right. I own, a hat. I own a hat. Um, I, here's, here's how I own a hat. Here's how I own a hat. I bought her the Lego Harry Potter fucking castle. Hogwarts, I guess. Yeah. It's called... And I said, oh, look, it's got a secret st- a staircase. And she's like, oh, hidden staircase. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not like I got it wrong. I should, talk, I should talk shop with your wife because... You uh, should. You'd be gone for hours. <laughs> if any, hours. If anybody could relate to a 30-something woman, it's you, my friend. <laughs> All right, can, can we just keep moving here? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to move to TV. Dave's tied That's it up. That's his pity point, by three, the way. Three, three. Well, I, I will say on the list of most of the things I look up, Sorcerer's Stone's ranked the worst movie. Is it? Yeah, most oh, of the time. Know. So, which I think it was interesting. I wouldn't say it is. It's okay. It's. Uh, I've seen the first one hmm. and the last one. Oh, the last it. one's the worst. Well, I'd say which one was the one with uh, uh, Gary Oldman in it? 
I don't know. I've seen the first one. That's Azkaban. And the last well, oh, I saw that one. one. But Azkaban is the one that most That's people That's the one where he's like one. locked up and the, shit, the right? Second, yeah. the second, he is the prisoner yeah. of Azkaban. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, I watched that one. Definitely Hollows Part 1 is the worst movie. <laughs> okay. okay. Awesome. Next round. Awesome. TV. Let's... All right, so. You're all tied up. Again, not a this that or that. That was a pity point, my friend. This is not a that, no. It's not a this or that. you got to come up with an answer here. All right. What show is the most over-rewarded TV show? Cosby Show. Given accolations when it doesn't deserve it. Emmys, basically. Cosby Show. The Amazing Race. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> you have to go first. That is your first pick. That is a good pick. It, it, it wins the <laughs> It's Emmy. only a good pick because you guys fucking love reality shows, and I don't know why. It, it, it's not the reality show that doesn't that deserves to win every year, though. The not Co- every single year. No. <laughs> no. It's the not Co- that good. The Cosby Show was a good show, don't get me wrong. It... it it broke a lot of boundaries in TV at that particular time. It kind of got rid of the whole stereotype of poor and black. Uh, you know, this guy was richer than shit. Um, you know, it you know owned like you know everybody had a car and house and all that stuff, and all those kids are obviously very well off. But I think to a degree, it won a lot of its awards because of the fact that it wanted to do that, and it just kept running on that formula. So white they, guilt. Yeah, it's white guilt. <laughs> it won it, its the, awards the, on argue, white guilt. the award was argued because of white guilt. That's a very good way of putting it. I was going to come a little bit more nicer about it, but that really is what it yeah, is. I'm not uh, nice. Yeah, well, fair <laughs> enough. Um, but I, I think it won a lot of awards because of that. And I think just overall, like, yes, is the show deserving of awards? And I think your question does loosely translate to that. It's not saying that it can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how many did they get that it shouldn't have gotten? I think right. it got way too many. Based on the fact that the criteria never changed, and the show just kept getting them. And it's not like it was all that revolutionary from season to season. He's still a black guy. He's still rich. <laughs> like it's, there really was no other makeup to that. It was a, a high-class a high class value family, and you know they were all successful in their own ways. And you know that's great and all, and there's nothing wrong with that, but... It's it just I think it it for lack of a better terminology which I kind of like now which is the it's white guilt and I think that was the Academy being you know I mean not the Academy whatever the Emmy version is is it still the Academy if it's the Emmys I think it is an they Academy get, they yeah. get voted in by Academy right? yeah it's an Academy of TV people yeah it's all TV right, exacts yeah. and shit right? right yeah so basically same idea but you know the Academy kind of went on the fact that they're all white they're all rich and this black guy's winning now so it's like oh yeah yeah okay we, we give you more. And uh, just, you know, to get a little information, The Cosby Show was nominated. They really did a lot of its winning in 1985, 86, 87. And then after that, it just kind of got nominated Died for off, a couple yeah. a couple of acting awards. So three straight years. Right when they brought in, like, uh, the cousin. <laughs> it dropped off. Yeah. <laughs> it won but that's more. also when a whole bunch of Wasn't shows that, like that started jumping Wasn't that up. Will Smith in The Fresh Prince? No, I guess no, that was no. That was uh, uh, that was Cosby Show. Well, I just had a flashback to our first podcast. <laughs> uh, but, that's a bad uh, acid trip. Bad acid trip. Okay, Dave, uh, why Amazing well, Race? Amazing Race has won the Emmy for Best Reality Television Show consecutively, way more than it ever should have. Uh, a great show, original format in its time, but this show like so many, has been uh, done over and over again. I don't think there's anything distinctive about any of the seasons specifically. Like, it's a bunch of people who have to fly to different parts of the world, and the only season that stands out in my mind is the one with Boston Rob from Survivor, Boston and uh, Boston Rob and Amber, mm-hmm. um, because they were so uniquely cutthroat in their approach to the game. But and I think that season definitely deserved to win. Um, Outside of that, I don't understand how it can win every year just because it has amazing production value. Not enough. Like it doesn't. Even, it's not even the highest rated te- uh, reality television show. That would be like Survivor. A lot of people say, "Oh, I can't believe Survivor's still on." Survivor is still com- uh, compellingly interesting every year. I think if anything, Big Brother has gotten better and better every season. The different twists they throw into it. I told and, you, thirty somethings woman. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I summarized this earlier. <laughs> And uh, he is right about them over rewarding the show, though. 
Yeah, you know, it is. How, how many times has Amazing Race won? Oh God, you know, way more than it should. It but gets, what are they winning first for? Though? First of all, it gets, well for their right, category. Are we winning best show or are we winning best reality best com- reality show reality show. competition show? Yeah. So the thing is, it's nominated every year and it wins almost every year. It's all I've only seen one one time they didn't win or two two times they haven't won in the last. I've gone through like is almost it all the Is truthfully that narrow reality competition show? Um, it's outstanding reality, reality competition program. That's a pretty narrow category. That's a pretty narrow category when I deal with sitcoms. You know how many reality shows? Like right now, there's less of them than there was, but in a, like in the yeah, last decade, the time, there was there's... so many of them. So many of them coming out of everywhere. Right. The ones that have endured, like are the big CBS ones. How many years did they win? I guess. Is a good okay. Way well. To say. Okay. Like, when that. did it start? When did it end? Kind All of right, thing. It started in two thousand. So they started winning in two thousand. They won in. 2003 was their first win. They won okay. in 2004. Okay. They won in 2005. They won in 2006. They won in 2007. They didn't win. No, they won in 2008. But they, that's they like won me in 2009. Winning, that's like me winning an award <laughs> for biggest ball sack in my house. Well, of course it is. I'm the only fucking. Boss. They won in 2011. <laughs> like it's such a narrow area that like how is that how is that hard? They you didn't know what win I mean? 2013. I'm about the first year I don't win that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they won last year. Okay. They won like and, they. they really... What did the Cosby Show win? But the show has not dramatically Cros- changed. The Cros- format of the best show, sitcom, right? Yeah, it won only twice though. Yeah, so it, it won it, only it, twice. Yeah. I would say one was deserved. Okay, so we're talking fifty percent here. Now, was it a good reality show? Great. Not that. Not. Every single year. How many seasons? Like, how long does this run for? This run oh, like, it's it's about, it's, this is on. It's on its twenty sixth season right now. I think. Did you say fucking twenty six? Yeah, but seasons? that's not years for that no, though. That's no. like three well, it's years. years. It's been sixteen years, I think. Sixteen really? years. Started in two thousand. I think. So sixteen years, and how many <laughs> weeks does it have? It has. It, it it just wins every year. I don't know if it counts both. I think it counts I, I think two it has, seasons like, as one year. So I think it has like uh, okay. ten wins in there. I think I counted. So, so it's been long. It, it's run, let's say, fifteen years, and it's won, let's say, ten years. Yeah, right. But I remember we were watching. the So how is that not deserving? I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Like, because I can specifically like, remember like, years. Like, you're you're actually proving the fact that it did deserve it. it no, must have. no. I can specifically remember years where, uh, especially the years with um, with what's his name, Russell. With Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. And it didn't even win then? When, when Russell, evil right. Russell, was stirring it up on Survivor? Or but it's it, based on the competition that they had, right? Like, I know, but like that Survivor has been way more I innovative. Because I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cosby they, Show had a harder run. I don't know who Russell is. And they still ended up giving asshole. it away to them. Plain and simple. Who did the Cosby Show beat? Uh, oh, I have no idea. I mean, I guess they would have beat shows like um, Family Ties and, and shows like that. No, Family Ties came later. Earlier. Earlier. Earlier? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Family. I'm thinking Family Matters, which is fucking terrible. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, what, no, Family Ties is... Growing early. Pains and... Um, the thing with the Cosby show is that it was a decent show. It was a good show. Like, Cosby, it's been tarnished a lot. Uh, the whole legacy of it's been tarnished because of the recent... But you're coming uh, here out. telling me about various people that have been on this show in various seasons. How can you tell me it wasn't good if you obviously because were enjoying it's not, it? Like, it hasn't been very creative in its approach. It hasn't changed it up. Do you think the Cosby show was that creative after two years? It wasn't I think that so. creative. It, the story they, have, they still have to write new episodes and put them in new scenarios. And and the Amazing Race has not changed. You Isn't just, that what the Amazing you Race is? a new is? place, and you gotta like. But the new get, place is the change. You, you gotta like dig up some coconuts, or you gotta like try to like race a. I think you're arguing Where something that has like a five <laughs> conversation garden. What is better, <laughs> fuck it all in the family, <laughs> or marry the children? Let's talk for an children. hour. <laughs> I'm gonna give this Married one children. to Dave. Believe it or not. Yeah, well, I knew you were because you're fucking biased. <laughs> I and you just and I'm gonna fucking tie on it. Well, I'm not biased on this one because I think this show, Cosby Show, only won a couple times. Yeah, but it was harder to win then. And you were saying it's over. They're over, fucking over, giving out for if you were picked for was guy Frazier. who walked around you naked like, in Frazier. reality Frazier. series. Frazier would have been a better Fra- pick. Frazier won like nine times in like eleven years. But like when was it, a good show. All but it's through. going against Seinfeld and like all these amazing comedies that but came Frazier out of the nineties. Frazier was a good show Friends. all the way through. I think it deserved what it won. 
I'm just saying, like it, it's over rewarded. Yeah. Where it's so Sopra- Sopranos Sopranos is another one which was a little over rewarded too. Like it's a good show. I love it, but it's sour grapes. Let's move on. That's fine. I think oh Modern Family they haven't. He's got playing. a head of steam going on here, right now. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. <laughs> I remember. Who's like? Come on, move on. Just to remind you, in the speed round last time, you were also on the roll. Okay. Yeah. Which boy band is worse, In Sync or Backstreet Boys? Hanson. In <laughs> Sync. Um, Backstreet Boys. Okay. You go first. Uh, what's the lead guy's name? Timberlake. He's terrible. He's still going. He's, He's a lot more going. famous than the guys in the back. He's more famous now because he was terrible in the band. Uh, back <laughs> How's Street, that work? Backstreet Boys sold a hell of a lot of albums. So did NSYNC for that matter. But NSYNC had one thing that the Backstreet Boys didn't have. Justin Timberlake. And Justin Timberlake's spiky fucking hair. That was terrible. That was terrible to begin he with. Was, he was a heartthrob. Well, of course, you had the poster. But <laughs> the, but what I'm trying to say is Backstreet Boys... Right between, next to Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, right next to Voldemort. And your wand. Your wand that you play with every fucking night. But anyway. I spell Fagus Ulysses on you. Anyway. Sorry, I don't mean to offend. Malas Marificaro. I don't. I don't, repeat, I don't mean what to offend. Did you just say? Oh, I said it. I remember that. I don't know why I remembered it, but I remembered it. That that is something. So to do. the the question oh, was God. just to be clear. The question was which one was worse. Which one's worse, Insync or Backstreet Definitely Boys? Definitely Insync. Backstreet Boys had way more hits. They had more hits, but they didn't have the legacy with Justin Timberlake. Who they don't have a legacy with Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake is. Now separate, he has nothing to do with any of them, and that's he where gives he's them made so much money. more credit and legitimacy. And now he's in acting, he's in all that shit. But he had fucking ugly don't forget about here. Lance Bass. Lance Bass does a radio station on fucking Cirrus now. Yeah, remember when he came out? That was a big I deal. could fucking do that if I had to. It's not complicated. You stand there and talk. I used to do DJing. It's not hard. It, there's no talent involved really in a lot of scenarios. If you're actually mixing, that's different. The actually, boys are by far worse. How their name. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> you don't think the play on words like NSYNC is fucking terrible? Not that is that way terrible. Not as NSYNC. Oh, sorry. NSYNC. And by the way, I don't know how to pronounce the star in the middle, but I'll tell you right now. You don't have a star in your fucking name, so you can fuck yourself. NSYNC is way more terrible. Everybody. Yeah, yeah very popular Rock song. And singing again. Okay, I gotta give it to Jody. <laughs> it was the star. When are you gonna you learn it? singing? Is How do you pronounce the star? That's what did it for you. Okay. I don't even know. But right. okay. Either way, you were offended by his singing, weren't you? Okay, this one, I don't know. <laughs> Just make it stop. This one, Dave may have a, a huge advantage, but you do have to come up with one off the top of your head. Who is the best WWE personality of all time? Ultimate Warrior. Macho Man. <laughs> all right. Now, technically, neither one of ours were actually WWE creations. They were WWE. You're talking like WWE. I'm talking F- about the know, whole franchise. We're okay with that, right? WWE, F- yeah. WWE. Because technically, shit. both of us are fucked in that scenario. If <laughs> you were really going to be a Fuck the World Wildlife World Wild Federation. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, who did you pick, sir? Macho Man, Ram Savage. Macho Man was pretty cool. That's you, actually who I meant. Like, <laughs> I, think, I, I, I think this is a pretty good fight, though, because Ultimate yep. Warrior and Macho Man have some of the most ridiculous promos you could yeah, ever yeah, watch. Were... In fact, when this is over, I want to pull some up and we can just watch a couple of photos. <laughs> Dude, I'm pulling one up now. <laughs> um, well, they both were that. huge coke heads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was apparent. Yeah, but so were a lot of wrestlers in, the, in those days. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, but they like Macho Man. You watch some of his shit. It is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, snap like, into a slim gym. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he, like okay, his promo at WrestleMania three, talking about Tito Santana. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Fucking Tito Santana. <laughs> Jesus He's like, Tito Santana. You. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like or just like I remember Macho Man's song, right? That he did on the nineteen ninety four wrestling superstars, and he was like, "The Tower of Power." Too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey. Ooh, yeah. I just right? watched. I don't remember <laughs> most of that. <laughs> we had it. We had the. Get the, down! 
1994. No, I don't think I had that he's one. He's no. the macho man. man. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find the Ultimate Warrior as you're trying to find from uh, he's really Royal Rumble. Well, well he definitely had longevity because I think I watched <laughs> wrestling way before you guys did. But Well, you're like a couple years older than me. Yeah. If I could just find the fucking clip, I would have this one. I'll, I'll find where he's in the locker room. Yeah, he's like going, yeah, yeah. The album. I had when I was a little kid, I had that. I could see the, that whole fucking song. I had the. He was the, way better than, than the, Ultimate Warrior. The WWF album, and that had like Captain Lou Albano on it and Hacksaw Jim Tuggan. Right, right, right. In fairness. You the, know what I'm talking about, though, the one with Hogan. Oh, right? yeah, no, with the Ultimate Warrior, right? Well, the, I could use that one, too. That would work well. No, you're talking about, you're talking about the one where yeah. he's in. The, like it's like a man, it's like a fake locker room, and he's just he yeah. goes on for like should be a good argument. Know, both minutes. these guys were fucking awesome. Yeah, and they were both ridiculous. Yeah, so, I would have picked Jake. Many, Snake. many years that I've covered professional wrestling, I have seen a lot of changes, a lot of changes in this great sport, and a lot of changes. Sport is really loosely used on this one. In professional wrestling in the World Wrestling Federation. Here is a man that has not only turned it around oh, 180 degrees. Good. <laughs> That's how stupid he is. He no, he's a, amazing. He did a 720. I would have, I would have either picked, picked Jake the Snake or fucking Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> Never seen that one before. Wait a minute. You got a mint. Wait, wait. A black boot, a white boot. Oh, you got your belt. I'm not a racist. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go with the fact that the Ultimate Warrior was the smarter man's version of the no, of Macho Man. I don't know about that. He was. <laughs> he is fucking funny, though. Yeah, it is ridiculous. His personality. All I'm hearing is snap it to a slim jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they both did some pretty terrible. Alright, well, we can't, we can't watch this did a fucking day. stick too, or, or a commercial. I can't remember what it was. I just want to watch more Macho Man promos. <laughs> Yeah, well, you wanted, fight, to, play some wolf- I wanted, you wanted to, to play some Wolfenstein, too. Find an Ultimate lost. Warrior promo that's better than that. You cannot. The one the one that I think Jody wants I'm to I'm trying to find to it. Bring I can't up. get it. I can't find it. Oh, anymore. really? But I know the one you're talking about. Oh, the little warrior. You know, he goes nuts for like 10 he minutes. Goes retarded nuts. <laughs> and we don't need to watch it, but it, it's, 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 retarded it's nuts. more retarded than Macho, Macho Man. Man was way more charismatic. Not to mention he was the better wrestler, but that's besides the point. How can he be wrestler. better at wrestler? Just a better performer. But I, you know, I, 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 my question is about personality. I don't know if he was a better performer. He was definitely, sir, well, certainly was. was. Awesome. I didn't ask who's the best wrestler. Or yeah. I asked who's the best personality. It's Macho Man. He's way more memorable. He was in Spider Man. He was. It's fucking he great. Was, that movie repulsed me. Bone saw. <laughs> what? He was Bone saw. <laughs> In we what? know that, but it was still a terrible movie. In what? He did. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. He did. Oh, in Spider-Man. He played Again, the, I watched about three he minutes and went, this movie is visually repulsive. <laughs> yeah. I can't watch this. It gets worse. <laughs> the best part of it is Macho Man. It's the only movie I've ever been able to see. The best about. part of Spider-Man is Macho Man? <laughs> it's Bonesaw. Okay, Bone so... Saw! He, he's lost. Ultimate <laughs> Warrior. Like, visually there's repulsive. Macho Man, and then there's... Ultimate Warrior. Do you know why they call him Ultimate Warrior? Because he because he's fucking better. He legally changed his name to Warrior. I know. <laughs> Which also makes it awesome. That is insane. That is insane. And when it comes to personality, I think Ultimate Warrior should get it. 
No, definitely. Macho no Man is funny, but personality, what? it's the same thing. Over what was Macho the... Man's iconic thing he did, like, to, like, other than, like, in the interviews, like, um, just, like, a la um, Ultimate Warriors shook the ropes. What did, what, what did, what did... Oh, well, Macho Man had way more than <clears throat> to him. Like, Ultimate Warrior is probably one of the worst wrestlers ever. Like, like, you know, that guy came out on, like, as much coke as he could find, and he would shake the ropes, <laughs> that's what I would imagine. and he would, a better he, he, would bur- he would burn himself out. His promos were weird. They weren't even funny. He was fucking fierce. Surprised nobody picked Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Oh, that was good Or The Rock. The Rock was, the Rock was great. Very charismatic. How could you argue that intro? <laughs> I love that both of you picked like old school. Old school shit. We picked old school ridiculous guys. <laughs> shit, I used. I, we're try- shit, I used. Look at them. See, the thing I... I, I he have- screams wrestling. Have- That's what he is. The thing Your guys... The thing with all the like, compared to Macho Man, they're, like... Macho Man is pretending. They almost fucking sound the same. Like <laughs> they do. They do, but this it's is the more intellectual, and more fearsome version. See, I, I, I think he's the more like fear. brute, yeah, kind of ridiculous. But Macho Man could have been a stage show in Vegas. Yeah, but the, yes, but the thing okay. with Ultimate Warrior, which is good. He, Ultimate Warrior was a I, fucking warrior. You don't even want it. You don't even care what he's saying. He's just like. No, like, the first thing you showed us was Macho Man saying about how he's going to do a 360 and he I does know, a 720. I know, that was fucking funny. No, Macho that's Man stupid. Had amazing timing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. I'm going to freeze the fucking air that smells. <laughs> Look at it! He looks like he's about about to explode. (laughs) That's the whole point! Look at him! He's getting so fucking red! He's gonna go home and watch all of this shit. (laughs) That's right, bitch! Look at his face! Look at his face! He's like... That's fucking awe! That's yeah. what that is. Oh, he, again, he's like, you know, go back That's and what I got kid. with Wolfenstein, too. Still didn't win. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> How could you? Look at you! You can't argue this! I gotta give it to Jody. <laughs> oh, my God! I was gonna give I it to I love that but... neither of you really argued. You both just <laughs> pulled up fucking yeah. videos. <laughs> You're like, this guy's awesome. <laughs> Uh, that is a, that is a, that is a tragedy. That is a tragedy. Well, look, here's the Ultimate Warrior in the Legion of Doom talking about a video game. Burlak would not be happy. That's true. <laughs> oh my God! Like Macho Man, way better promos ever than. So now There's something about that Ultimate Warrior turn. that, like Jody made a good point, where it screams wrestling. It's, it's just a and guy. It's everything about wrestling. It's no, a, you can take your guy out of the context you of wrestling. You really, really do feel like he else. might explode. Yes. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can take your guy out of the wrestling format and put him into something else, and it still kind of makes sense. This is only fucking wrestling. That's it's all only, it is. It's only wrestling, and it's, it, it kind of set the precedent of like the big, angry, out of control yeah. idiot. You know, for, I never understood his appeal. Yeah, it's the same appeal Goldberg had. You know, yeah. like, where he was, you yeah. know everyone like loved. I don't even know. Like I, I kind of see what you're saying, Dave. But like I do like Macho Man more. But there's something about Ultimate Warrior. I'm surprised nobody picked uh, Stone Cold. I'm surprised nobody picked The Undertaker. He was, yeah. Uh, he was yeah. So cool. And that creepy fucking guy. What was the original there. question? Paul Bearer. Paul Bearer uh, yeah. My question was, who is the best WWE personality? So I was going off personality. Oh, know? well, then he's got way more personality, Macho Man. Again, but Jody... You're right, I do have way more personality. Jody slammed home the points a little bit more. All right, all right. That's all. I don't think anybody slammed home any points. I think we watched videos. <laughs> well, <laughs> my, vi- my video sold it better. His video sold it better, and he made a couple points. 
<laughs> Where is the... Dave just showed you a video. <laughs> I he well, had the lead. My video while. made my point. So did mine. So did his. But the but thing... then I put points on top of that, and that's why I won. All right. That's yeah. what winners do, Dave. You're not familiar with. Move on. <laughs> History. <laughs> Should the United States maintain its embargo against Cuba? No. <laughs> well, what's it? Yes. Okay. Tell me why. Because Dave wanted my answer. <laughs> no, uh, in all honesty, it I don't think it was really all that fair to begin with. It is going to... Well, they've already started to lift the embargo for travel and stuff like that. So the, the citizens, like, what is it, 2016 they're allowed to know? Something yeah, like that? I think so. They're not allowed they've yet. They've done it but, recently, but yeah. Yeah, they're not allowed whether, yet. Whether or not they should do it, they, they've already started to do it. But um, after 50-something plus years... Why well, stop now? <laughs> That's the only argument. It's terrible for the economy. The economy can be much better off. And, Which whose economy? Uh, actually, a lot of economy actually, because there's a lot of travel that goes there, and there's a lot of travel that's restricted because the Americans have restricted it. Do you actually realize that this is going to generate revenue for the states? Cuba's human rights record, human rights record, is bad. Yep, and, and, we, and the Americans go to China all the time, and they have well, a way maybe worse they one. should have an embargo with them too, but that's they not, should, but they don't. So they have an embargo in North Korea. They sure do. North Korea is much. This was a country that go. allowed Russians to bring missiles to their shores to yep. annihilate their people. Yep. So I don't understand why the why America should be uh, happy go lucky with them. They should and not. Canada be. doesn't have a tarnished record either. Give me a break. It's you. You can't. It, nowadays, embargoing is really a terrorist type thing. They're not fucking terrorists. They're a bunch of, in a lot of scenarios, very poor, uh, poor people. And because I'm about the government, the government is not poor, but the people are, and the people are what should be making the government. And I think you're going to see in the next fifty to hundred years, you're going to see massive change in Cuba. It's going to be a completely different country because of the fact that we are going to, they are going to start lifting all this stuff. You, you have no argument. You even wanted my answer, so this is a done deal. I've won this category already. Well, I don't lose just based on that. It's a speed round. You answered first, so I have to go with the other side of the argument. And the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, that there's been a lot of bad blood, that there's been uh, military action on both sides of it, and that the... the Normalizing relations is not as simple as just... Since the Cuban Missile Crisis, what, what other issues have happened? It doesn't matter. That's a big enough one on its own. No, not really. It really is. No, it was like 50 years ago, 60 years ago. It, it, it's it's a mute point now. We, mm-hmm. We're we living in a completely different still world. Still the same were. guy that allowed that to happen. His brother, and the guy's still alive, is still running that government. Are you just like Dave? No, I actually agree no. with you, but I think he's making a bunch of points. So, I think that, um, that Cuba should make amenities and try to normalizing relations should have some give and take on both sides it's not just america admitting that they're wrong i think cuba's been a whole hell a whole hell of a lot of wrong in how they approached and it and you don't think the americans weren't wrong in this they were terribly wrong in this well i didn't say it was it was not fault on both sides but um i think that that's part but um, you're arguing saying that you should keep the embargo why should you keep a 60 plus well 50 actually sorry 50 ish plus Embargo on a country that number one has gone through government changes at this point have been mm-hmm. more opened up and on top of that Are still globally wise still suffering and they will eventually their people do not government. have free access to information They don't even have the fucking internet like they, they do have the internet. I used it while I was there Maybe in resorts, but not for the people. Yeah, I used it outside <laughs> the resort, but anyway it Still happens the it, it is not the same Cuba that you think of from 30 years ago. It's not the same country It's it's an evolve. It's an evolved evolution. Yes, has it been slower and it's even more slower because of the embargo They not every country is going to learn from their mistakes the same at the same speed And there's no reason why you need to penalize a uh, penalize a government that 50 years ago made a mistake based on what they thought they pretty big be mistake doing. almost dist- almost led to the destruction of the Western world Yep. And we wouldn't be sitting here talking so about it. So you say, but we also don't know if anybody would ever actually fire any of those fucking missiles. Oh, it was close. It was we, damn close. And you don't think we haven't had close since that? There's still missile silos in operation. Well, we're talking specifically about? to the Cuban incident. Oh, it doesn't yeah. mean that there was other incidents that, that There's tons negates of incidents. It. Yes, and you don't see the U.S. doing embargoes on every other fucking country they've fought with since. Well, maybe they should. Well, but we're specifically talking about the one that, that's Cuban. 
Yeah. But that's also that also makes my point is if we're if we've learned from our mistakes of not issuing embargoes on every country, why should we not be lifting the ones that we made fifty years ago? I don't know if we're learning sense. from mistakes. Maybe that they, maybe they're getting it right with Cuba. <clears throat> really? Because maybe the economy is better with the states because of the fact that they didn't put embargoes on every other fucking country they've been pissed off at. But what what's, you learn what, from what, what price did you have to pay? <laughs> what price did human rights price. records and to um, you know like Scarface wouldn't have happened <laughs> if it hadn't been for the, the, the embargo. Honestly, are we going to continue this? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's bringing up Scarface now. Like, you went a different a way there. Movie, you're, you're, you had me until he's Scarface. got nothing else. He's got well, nothing else. Forget I said Scarface. No, he's got nothing happen? else. We're now bringing up... Kevin, Maybe. what do you think? All the refugees That's, is what I was getting he's at. He's actually making a yeah. good point. Yes. Yes. Okay, forget Scarface is a fiction, but the, the, the refugees... The problem, the problem with me is that I don't... Like, your position is indefensible, but you're actually doing a good job of it. That's he's what, doing a good job, but the reality <laughs> is really he's not that's, that's tough. That's, but I'm going off argument, not what is all, the right answer. Exactly. That's All of the refugees trying to flee that country is because of the, the conditions are so abhorrent there that there should be political pressure mounted against that country to change their How ways. How were their conditions prior to the Cuban Missile Crisis? Prior to the Cuban Missile Crisis or prior to Communism? Either one will well, work. Well, they had the, the revolution scenario. right before. Right before the revolution, revolution, that country was flourishing. Absolutely. But uh, before but the granted, revolution, there were some... If, they, if a country is flourishing, truthfully, they don't normally have revolution. The revolution, revolution is exactly. usually born you always out of have, unrest, you always not have, really born out of out of a flourishing economy. There, there's some, there's I mean, some, you're never going to have here in Canada, you're never going to have a revolution. There's some fair argument to that. I'm going to say lazy, and there's a lot of maple syrup. That's going to be nothing. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be nothing. You can't It'll be hockey sticks. Anybody. You can't get people to come out and agree it's fucking Tuesday here. But don't, nobody cares. The revolution, <laughs> the revolutionaries. But that's the reason why we shouldn't care about this embargo anymore. Why should we continue to uphold something that really happened fifty some odd years ago? It's like saying, okay, well, you know, you made a mistake, so we're never ever gonna forgive you for it, and we're gonna just drive you into the ground until you're done. To be to have an embargo put on you from one of the biggest countries when it comes to economy, biggest countries in the world is a terrible burden on you. It's not something that everybody just thinks. Oh well, you know. Oh well, they can't. The get, bit, the we can't. Question, we can't import the, the, cigars the big, to that country. It's not big, that simple. The big question I think is in the whole. The, this question is: If they do lift the embargo, does the money go to people, or does it go to government? Right. If it goes to government. Then they should continue. If it goes to people, it certainly goes to stop. government. No, and because they've already come on to record, and the government has already started talking about how the fact that you can now privately own land in Cuba. It is we're not talking Cuba from ten years ago. Even this is this is something that's changed over the last couple of years. They were announcing this while I was in Cuba, and that was like almost three years ago now. It's it's it. We're we're talking about something. We're still trying to penalize a people that made a made a mistake under a government that they may not have even had any control over, and you're trying to argue the fact that they should still have an embargo because they did something bad a while ago. Well, then if that was the case, we should have an embargo on fucking Germany. The embargo Nobody's exists have because fucking, of that. Because mistake. Germany has done way more fucking bullshit to this world. Than I, think fucking, I think it's they, Germany's they, turn to figure out the Russia Middle East. Too. You can say about any country, and still, but you don't have embargoes on them, Russia, do you? There's still Germany. war sanctions against Germany. There's still war sanctions, war sanctions against Japan. Yeah, and you can still buy a fucking German car. Can you buy any Cuban cars here? Do you know why? Because they can't do the that's industry. Not my, that's not because my Because they're fucking locked out well, of it. Cuba's never going to get any cars. They could. You can't even buy American cars. You're trying to say... Cuba. Right. Yeah, but let's put it this way. They said that about Australia, and Australia makes two cars. Australia's a different country than well. Cuba. That's like saying Costa Rica is going to be popping out cars. Like, it's not going to happen. Cuba's a smaller country. Granted. There, there are there, The reality is that in war, there are sanctions, and it should not be lifted just not because. not war. It should be lifted. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an immense bargaining chip They're against not at war. A, a belligerent government against them who, who has... Um, Still not at war. And you keep jumping over that. They're not at war with Cuba. They haven't. The they States, technically have never been. It's not, an embargo. The United States has not North legally Korea. declared war against anybody since the World War II because it requires the ratification of Congress. And therefore, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and a whole bunch of other things were never truly legal well, wars. The, the Korean War was a war action. It was not actually a war. <laughs> well, then who are the bigger but, criminals? Fucking but, America or Cuba? Which is the exact reason why. <laughs> which is the exact <laughs> reason why I'm trying to argue this. If that is, point is true. That's 
is there is really no bigger criminal mind than that of the American organized organized warfare division. Really, it's it's you're you're arguing about keeping an embargo on a people that had really no choice in this scenario. They're now slowly getting back some of their government. It's going to take a long time. You can't just fucking uh, overrun an entire government in five minutes. It doesn't work that way. No, you know, it doesn't. They tried that. No, it didn't they work. tried it. Didn't work well. <laughs> you know. So, but it, it worked for the Castros. People. But they have fucked this country up so bad now that they are so economically poor within reason. And even if you talk about the fact that the upper one percent of that, you know, obviously the military or whoever you want to call it, is yeah. is yeah. He's is is is, yeah. is the fact that can you just shut up for a minute while I'm talking? <laughs> Sorry, I'm right. listening. The, you're, you're trying to argue the fact that you want to remove, uh, you want to keep an embargo on a country that never really had control over what they were doing. It was a, a group of people that said, yeah, fucking come over here, park those missiles, no big deal. Um, it wasn't the, the grand scheme of people. They are slowly trying to bring the government in, but it's not something you can just throw in in five minutes. So why would you sit there and continue to try to destroy a people? Because that's really what the embargo does. It destroys people. That's what it does. An embargo, all an embargo is, is a way of fucking over a government. That's all they tried to do with it. And That's all it is. Yeah, but they fuck over all of their people by doing that. And just having, like, just like There's the, never been an embargo in this fucking history of the world that has ever worked really well. They're doing Name it, one. They're doing it right now against Russia. That's really? Like, What's the embargo on Russia there, right there, now? There's tons of economic sanctions being used against Russia for what Absolutely, happened. Absolutely, and we're still trading with them. Next. It's because they have a huge supply. Of oil. You cannot do any Econom- trading. This, this with is Cuba a part of, as part of, of the embargo of, of modern day world economics. You are, and this not, is a, you are not arguing what the embargo is on Cuba. The embargo on Cuba is basically fuck off. You don't exist anymore. It's what, not. What, we're not going to do okay, certain I, things. With I have you. a question. What was the um, what was the point of the embargo? Point of the embargo was what to was stop the, the Cuban people from continuing. That's exactly the point, the point, the point was, of the embargo what the, is... What, what was the point? What was what, what were they trying to accomplish by having this embargo? But, well, I think, putting pressure on the, I think putting pressure on the people to overthrow the government, which will vote out the government, but of course they don't have proper democratic elections because their human rights record is abhorrent. Therefore, they shouldn't deal with them. They did slight them in, in the 1960s in the Cuban The microphone crisis. that we're actually recording on was made in China, one of the biggest human rights violators in the world. Jerome's and we don't right. have a fucking any but, but what kind was, of embargo what on was the What were they trying to accomplish? The by point of the embargo, embargo was to Cuba. shut down the government to, of Cuba. But it's all the, did it work? Is it working? No, not at all. They're still thriving in a way. However, it's, it's, they could thrive way better. All I've heard from people American of Cuba, people. the Cubans is they that that it has put a hardship on the country, and they've been trying to find a way out of it. The way they should have done it is actually to depose their their tyrannical government and to bring actual law and order and civil rights to their country. But the people didn't do it because they're too cowardly. They have law and order. That's why in fucking Cuba. And it, and, and it, they have more law and order than you do. Internet, the internet there. Their law and order is provided power. by the why, military why, forces. Why don't they have? Why don't have? They don't, why don't they have free access to information? They have limited access to information. Well, they don't have. That's free not free. Access. Neither does China. Fuck China. We're not talking about China. But China is the same point. You can't have. You can't tell me that the embargo is worth something when you have a much bigger violator. Compared to what you're saying, a much bigger violator in China, and no one's done a fucking thing about it because you want the microphone that's currently recording this. Is this the fucking history thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, it is. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to call here because it's funny because they actually are lifting parts of this embargo right now. They are right now. Yes, um, parts but, of it. Parts of it. Yeah, but thing which is, which is the reason why we need to do it. Thing is, I want to see a final. <laughs> yeah, and I knew he was going to vote for you anyway, just to be a dick, because he wants me to pull to this next round. Yeah. I get it. But, uh, but <laughs> let's face it, but let's face it, I he realistically it. has told you I already won. That's really what he said. You ha- I happen to agree with you, but I don't. Because so, I, I had to debate the other side. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you didn't do a better job. debate, though. You, know, you didn't. No, Jody did a let's better be debate. Let's be safe. But the there same you time. go. Better debate. That means I fucking won. But he made... But it's like arguing for, you know, did Hitler do a good job in World War Two? You know, it's in like... In some scenarios, he did. Well, well, if his goal was to <laughs> kill six million Jews, yeah, he did a great job. He did good. <laughs> he fucking excelled at it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, he had the devil's advocate position, so I had to give it to him. Mm-hmm. No, you just want another round. I did want that too. 
Yeah. Let's, but, be, let's be honest here. I, I, want, want. I wanted to see you duke I it out on a geek question here. And you guys, right. you know... You know, considering the, the trailers that came out this week, I want to know what movie is going Star to be Wars. better, Star Wars or Batman vs. Superman? Uh, Star Wars. Batman vs. Superman. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>, I won. <laughs> Did you just hear how he answered that? He doesn't want to debate that because he knows he's wrong. Okay, so the good news is I won anyway. It's not over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make Wars. my argument. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck Star Wars. That's my argument. <laughs> he would have picked Star Wars anyway. So I yeah. know he would have. That's why. I won. No, he wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. Why not? Because Star Wars can. It's blow not his me. thing. It's Star not. Wars can blow you. Do I think either movie is gonna be fantastic? No. Do I think I will enjoy the Star Wars movie more? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> I know I will enjoy Batman vs. Superman. More. Why? Because, I, for the first time ever, I get to see these two comic book characters come together in live action. Oh, here comes okay? the bullshit compassion. Come I get to see <laughs> some great moments. Like, I've already seen like the teaser trailer this week, right? Mm-hmm. Where it was like, do you bleed? You will, right? And wow, that's like, original. Wasn't that in Rocky? No. Wasn't the third and, Rocky? Um, <laughs> it's 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 like the Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller's classic story, oh, Batman classic story, story that's already been done a couple times, right? Like the trailer was was talking about how you know now that there's a Superman in the world, <laughs> you know everyone's marveling at so right. much about what he can do. Honestly, nobody's talking about what he should do, and I think it's what what Zack Snyder's doing is really interesting. He's saying like if superheroes are real, you know, and like and, and there's been lots of live action superhero films, but what if there really was a Superman? What does that mean? And I think that's what this film's going to explore. Nothing, because Superman's terrible. It's certainly better than Star Wars. Like, come on, like really? What? It's just the same shit regurgitated <laughs> again thirty something years later. I think the fucking internet just blew up. <laughs> <laughs> like it's super. It's Don't worry, not Star that many Wars. people listen. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to sum this up way quicker. <laughs> it's fucking Star Wars. It's okay. plain and simple. It's going to do better. We all know it's going to do better. Let's not be... Is this why which movie will do better? Which movie will be better? Will That's not exactly do better. what he's not, not, not financially. Do better and be better is the same yeah, thing, really. Sure, I mean, it can be, but... It doesn't, you know. But I, I win it on both sides because, Episode let's face one it, Affleck most. as Batman is going to be fucking terrible. No, you don't know that. No, I know that. Trust me, I know that. You know why I know that? Why? Because it's fucking Ben Affleck. All right, number ben two. Affleck number two. Who's playing Superman again? Henry Cavill. Don't care. Okay, number three, Superman. Number four, fucking terrible putting the two together. You're taking you're taking a fairly terrible sh- series, which is fucking Superman. <laughs> pardon me. And you're mixing it with <clears throat> something that's good sometimes. It's rare, but it happens. They should put Adam West in. Dark Knight? <laughs> Dark Knight? Good movie. Dark Knight Rises? Terrible. I don't care. But this isn't the same Batman. This is a new Batman. No, you know why they have to keep doing new Batmans? Because they all fucking suck! That's why! That is the problem. Nope, they all suck. Nope. The nice thing about 50, Star Wars 50. movies... The nice thing about Star Wars movies is everybody here, even though, yes... We all have our hatred for them. Generally, the first three, which are actually the second three, but whatever. So I just have a hatred for having to fucking. But make that a distinct. The only per- like, do you enjoy Star Wars? Um, Star Wars is one of those. Reason? Pardon me. There's a reason. There's a couple movies I think are really good, but with Star Wars, there. I think miss. again, it's a, it's an overrated franchise because those first three movies were so like captivating, mm-hmm. you know, because the story was so good. I think, the space opera. Again, right? the reason why I ask this is because both movies are trying to remake old classic feelings. of. No, but you if know? you look at the trailer... Well, okay, sorry. The feelings part, yeah, I do agree with you on. Uh, but I don't think... I don't think the new Star Wars movie is a remake. It's not a remake. It's, no. It's obviously a continuation of the story past Jedi. Um, it seems to happen, it looks like it's at least 30 years, if not longer. But That would make sense. The old ass Harrison Ford. Yep, yep. But Harrison Ford is hey, awesome. Chewie, we're home. Whatever. Uh, I don't even, yeah. Star Wars wasn't that good of a story, I don't think. I Star think Wars wasn't that good of a story, but it was enjoyable. It, and loved right, it. Right. it was still enjoyable. What trailer was And that? I will still. Watch trailers? Trailers? It's not horrible. I saw both. I saw both. I saw both trailers. Okay. 
Which trailer was better? I still think the Star Wars trailer is better mm-hmm. than Superman the... versus Batman. Okay. The Star Wars trailer was great because the first opening shot is that of the desert planet, which we don't know yet which one it is, but it probably is um, the one from the last the last fight. Um, the but the first thing you see is that fucking wrecked star destroyer in the background, mm-hmm. and it's just like it's fucking right. like buried, and there's like also. A t- I thought it was a mountain. A t- I, I only caught that on the second watch. Okay, I'm sorry you're slow, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm really sorry you're slow. There's nothing I can do about that. But I caught that on the first try, like almost everybody else did, except for Dave. Uh, but you saw that, and you also saw the ruined Tie Fighter there as well. So I mean, sorry, the ruined uh, X-wing was still there as well. So you saw, you know, the 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 level of the fact that everybody lost here. It wasn't just. The Empire got their asses kicked on Endor, and you know, thirty years later, we're here. Um, it's they they both lost something. It they they bring up a couple of different things that are happening, and it looks like it's almost like oh, it's like Luke's next kids and shit like that. Whatever, I don't care. But you see, you see who you think is Luke, and you know he he touches the uh, R two. Uh, it might be R two. It might be another one of the R two droids. But he touches the R2 droid and, you know, the droid instantly turns, you know, red, signifying he's been turned evil, right? It's it's all the little subtleties in the trailer that I thought was great. The the Superman and Batman trailer was, I will say it was interesting to look at, but I will tell you, we probably will enjoy the trailer more than the movie. It's, they've shown you everything. It's just like they did with the fucking... They showed us right? nothing. They, oh, they showed you enough. <laughs> That's all you needed to see. But it was it was just well it was just like the you know the whole intro thing is really all it was, but the you can't judge your movie based on what you've seen in the trailer. The these aren't even full trailers; these are teasers of both. Movies. No, actually, mine is a full trailer. This is I'm finally a full trailer. It's a, it's a final trailer. It's not really a trailer. A trailer has to give you something of the plot. They did. No. They gave you the plot of that it's now the next generation. It's in, it's fucking in space. That's it's in <laughs> space and they're flying it's, around. It's a, it's a fucking space opera. They're flying so around. really isn't that Falcon. much of a story to There's stormtroopers to I, I fight. Think, I think Star Wars has earned the right not to give away the plot Doesn't in the trailer. I mean, well, you kind of know what it's about. Like, look at Phantom Menace. The trailer for Phantom Menace was terrible. It was a terrible trailer. You knew everything that was going to fucking happen before that movie even came out. You knew there was going to be... Well, it's a prequel. Everyone first. went to go see it, though. What's that? Everyone went to go see that. That's movie. right. And everybody's going to go see the new one anyway. I'll tell you right now. Well... I might not see it in a theater, but I'll definitely see it when it he, he, Yeah, well... I'm, well, I'm, I'm not even a fan, and I'm sure my ass will be in one of those seats somehow, some way. Yeah, you're either going to go with somebody who wants to see it or everything... You can't tell me that a single person's come up to you and said, "Hey, let's go see the Superman Batman movie that's coming out." <laughs> I, I didn't even know that. It's not coming out for exactly, a year. Exactly. So because I it's, think right, twenty. No one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. It's Star Wars it's is two franchises. It's coming out soon. It's yeah. two franchises that are now kind of busting them out because they really don't have anything else to go with. Batman, I think, has a little bit more leg room in this scenario. Superman's done. Like we just need to fucking put that one down. It's 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 the. I dog. liked Man of Steel. I don't care what people say about that movie. Well, um, the problem is that most people weren't wrong on that, and it was a terrible movie. Most people thought it was terrible. And it had why, terrible no, it's ratings. not terrible. I don't even want to hear why it's terrible. It's not. Um, I'm gonna tell you, like when Bat, when Ben Affleck walks out in this trailer as Batman, I was like, oh my god, he looks like a real Batman. Like he looks like a comic book Batman. He looks fucking chiseled out of stone. He looks fucking like he's mean. He's he's brooding. Get fucking Alfred in there, man. And like, and the, the, what the they screen? show Alfred in the in the trailer? He's narrating. He's narrating. Oh, it's, oh, right, right. It's um, what's his name? Um, Jeremy. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. Oh, see, okay. he's the new Alfred, by the way. Um, and and which might work, might not. But what what this movie, I like Jeremy Irons. To me, what this movie's he's gonna be very. What different. I'm hearing is they should have made a new Batman movie and left Superman. You out. got it, and that's exactly where I was going on this. Well, eventually they will. Oh, I'm sure they will <laughs> because they'll finally realize that Superman We've is had a terrible. Enough, fucking... We had so many Batman movies. It's time for Batman to sort We've, of come in. What and... are you talking about? How many fucking Supermans have we had? Five. Uh, keep going. Five. Really? How many were in the original series? Four. Which was four. Then you had oh, six. Well, oh, I, I, six. I, I, I forgot about Superman Returns because fuck that movie. But Yeah, because <laughs> fuck almost every Superman movie. Yeah, the first but, and second one weren't bad. 
You can point to one in Batman that's just as bad, like Batman. Absolutely, that's yeah. the exact reason why Batman we're going and Star Robin, Wars here. Batman Forever. Ugh. Star Wars wins this. Like, there's no, de- there's no fucking debate. Like, there's total debate. You're talking it's two bullshit franchise. It's two bullshit franchises that they've had to put together now because Superman's so fucking terrible. It is a terrible franchise to be into a movie. It's done. It's way past done. There's nothing exciting about fucking Superman. Everything's great. This would be great, There's man. nothing fucking exciting about him. At least Batman once in a while can show you a cool new fucking vehicle. What does Superman do? Fucking biz a little whiny bitch. That's all he does. And like that. I've heard enough. Can you not? Can you not agree with me on that? Superman was quite a whiny bitch. Whiny bitch, exactly. The, I'm a little. No, I'm not saying there isn't Superman whiny bitches and Loki in. Should get together. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying there isn't whiny bitches in Star Wars. Luke Skywalker sure is. is the like epitome of a whiny oh, bitch. Oh, that whole this movie. Fucking, that uh, first, the best. Okay, let me God. tell you something about Star All Wars. Whiny bitch. The best part about Star Wars, the original trilogy, is Han Solo. And now Han Solo is an old decrepit. Lando fucking Calrissian was awesome. What are you talking about? Okay, well, they're both, they're way past their prime, both of them. Okay, is my point. Oh, yes, and because rebooting a fucking character from 19, what, 1940s? 40s. Yeah. Rebooting the character Super over and over fucking again. You're telling like, me that Billy Dee Williams I'm not saying Ford that. Today. I'm not saying that Batman isn't popular because it is, it is a good franchise. It's done very well. And I think, and I'm not also, (laughs) but I'm also, (laughs) I had to put that in there, Uh, but I'm not arguing the fact that Batman doesn't deserve a movie, but Spider-Man's fucking terrible. I mean, not Spider-Man, Superman's fucking terrible. Spider-Man is terrible, but but we're not even talking about that. Visually repulsive. But that's probably what the next movies are going to be. It's going to be Spider-Man, fucking Batman, and uh, fucking, uh, well, they really can't. Spider-Man and Batman. That'd be awesome, though. (laughs) He doesn't even know what he's saying anymore. It'd be interesting. No, but that's how fucking terrible (laughs) this idea is. They're putting two characters that, number one, don't really belong together. They shouldn't. And yes, they've obviously had crossovers, but... Superman and Batman, okay, this whole movie is called Dawn of Justice because it is the beginning of the Justice League. And this is where these two no are going to come head to head. They're going to they're gonna gain mutual respect for each other, and it's going to They're making up. a movie to set... Shut up! I'm, I'm, I let you talk for like movie. 20 minutes. Okay, a like, fucking group movie. You're done. You're so done. Why the hell does Batman need to fight Superman? You got it, and that's the problem that I have. Here's with the all answer this. for you. I Jeff. need an answer. Here's the answer. The answer is that these two are going to go head to head. They have opposing viewpoints uh, or objectives in this film, which is going to set them up as adversaries. But they're going to, of course, come together mutual, you know, feeling out their mutual goals to fight Lex Luthor, right? right. And Sounds then, like which, is, which is going to be played by We're Jesse gonna, Eisenberg, which is. I'm a little we'll see. About. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's intriguing, isn't it? It's no, a, intriguing isn't the word. It's not. It's not what terrible I terrible is the not word who you're I would have for. picked. Shut up. <laughs> terrible is the word you're looking for. <laughs> okay, the, these two are going to go head to head, and then they're going to be they're going to come together. And of course, Wonder Woman is debuting in this film as well, and also Aquaman. So oh, why wow, don't, that's why a don't, sell. Why don't the fuck do they just call this movie... Aquaman. This you know like, what? Honestly, I didn't think they could make this any more boring, but then I found out Aquaman. Wait, why, <laughs> why, why even call the movie Batman v Superman? Why not, just call it, why not just call the movie Dawn of Justice? It is... Well, I don't know. I think Dawn of Justice... I think because they want Batman and Superman's name in the title for marketability. Right. But I think that really uh, this movie should just be called Dawn of Justice. But you know they need. Then no one would see it. They need both. Right. The, they, need, they need both. The, they need both of the names on the marquee, right? right. You You're know? going against well, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. I actually got a question about Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. Okay. Because not being a huge fan, if every fucking Star Wars fan that I've talked to hates the next three movies, the the second three, why the fuck are we making more? Exactly. Uh, because the second three really weren't all that hated. No, I don't think they were that bad, but oh, no. they were hated. They were hated. They were hated, but by a group. I thought they were fine. It wasn't, it wasn't they the were masses. Hated. I, I, like, I like parts in every single one of the new ones. I think but everyone of the new ones. That problem is they're not solid. Why were they Every one of the ones that... that, that, the ones that, 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 that because because George Lucas, Lucas, Lucas had everything to do with it. Just like yeah. Indiana Jones 4. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, yeah. and that's the reason why George Lucas is completely oh. out of the fucking loop. When you watch the trailer for the new one... The first thing, and actually, you can relate to this more than anybody. When you sure. watch the when you watch that first trailer, I don't know if you've seen the, the new Star Wars. trailer. I saw no, the, the Star Wars. The actual, I haven't seen any. The trailer that came out a couple days ago. The trailer that comes out of Decade does a really predominant shot of basically of the stormtroopers, and they're doing their kind of like little walk, hmm. and they basically they do a face forward, and when they do a face forward, you see the new masks. The new masks aren't changed that much, but they are changed. They're more triangular now. But they now look. 
really like they look like something out of fucking funny enough Wolfenstein, like one yeah. of the later games. Yeah, yeah. Where it's more like it's really fucking oh, like it it's it you look at it and you're you're actually like, holy shit, these guys are fucking badass. And the thing that I think is gonna end up making this a better is it's it's not a reboot per se, but it is in a way because it's being taken on by a whole new team now. You're also dealing with Disney, which can throw more money at it. Um, but I think you're gonna you're gonna get a movie that is gonna. I think it's gonna shock people. I think people are gonna go. Those last three movies were pretty fucking terrible, but I'm still gonna go watch this one because they are. Let's face it. Right, they're gonna. Everybody keep at this table like is gonna eventually but, watch it. Maybe yeah. not Dave, but Jeff probably will end up watching it. He might not go to the theater and watch it. Star Wars. But, yeah. I'll yeah, watch it. Probably I, watch. I, I swear to God, I already know I'm going to end up at the I have somehow. no fucking desire to watch, to watch the Superman versus Batman movie. And honestly, I don't think I ever will. It's up there with Spider-Man 3 for me. I don't give a fuck. Well, I really don't care. So, like, I, I'm more excited to go see, like, Avengers, which, but it's coming out real soon. Yeah, yeah. But... For me, that's way better than both these movies. Which is fine. You know, and that's your personal preference. And you Dave know. Dave obviously has a passion for Batman and Superman. I get it. But when you look at what is going to be the best of those two movies, it's definitely going to be Star Wars. Star so, yeah. Wars is going to fucking destroy I, it in the box I, office, the and it's going to be better. The thing I want to ask the question is, I'm worried about both these movies. I'm not. I'm, worried, I'm not worried about the new I Star think Wars Star movie. Wars. I, I think After I saw that actual full trailer, it's it sold me on it. I'm actually like... The, fr- the teaser trailer, I was like, you can fuck yourself. This when Han terrible. Solo shows up at the end, and he's looking so old. Who cares? Have you seen Mark Hamill lately? Like, he does not look... No, I saw him on no, the they, flash. Didn't, they didn't even show he him. He was on the flash. He was the trickster. He was ridiculous. They didn't show him in the movie. They I'm showed not him worried in the about either of these movies because I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. I, I think I think out of the two of them, the one that has the better chance is going to be Star Wars. By, I think money by, wise, I don't think you're wrong, but I think it's because it's Star Wars. Well, money wise, yeah. I don't think anybody will debate that Star Wars will. Do but it. you can say the but, same thing for his. But, that's but not, that's it's got really Batman. Like, Batman. Batman is a very powerful. Batman and Superman. Everyone's going to go. No one gives a shit about Superman. I'm going to go see both these movies. I know. I'm more excited. There is 15 people in Minneapolis that like fucking Superman. That's it. That's I, it. I know Superman's love, man. Superman's Superman. Is I, wonder, I wonder. Superman if, used to be. I wonder loved. if, and, and I'm keeping an open mind with Ben Affleck, but I'm wondering if a lot of people won't, and that's gonna hurt. I think people are. Batman. I have no desire I, to see Ben Affleck I, as Batman. Any, I do. I think I, no I'm desire. curious to any see how. Any fear I has. had about Ben Affleck as Batman has been quenched, uh, like. like Put out by by this like trailer. Say, he didn't quenched. even speak in the fucking trailer. He no, just kind of looked around. And was like, whoa, whoa, I'm looking at a. What is that's all Batman? What are you talking about? Batman you, is only the when chin. When you saw it, when you saw the trailer, Batman for, is the chin. When you saw that's it, awesome. did you ever see the original teaser for Batman? Uh, Batman Begins. I think so. The original teaser starts out as like almost like kind of like a flame thing, and then you see the silhouette of Batman. And then they say a couple words, and I think it's actually, um, what's his name, uh, Alfred in the, that oh, Michael Caine. Caine. Michael Caine. And he's doing, like, a little narration, and it's like, you know, blah, 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 you know, this is the beginning, blah, 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 blah. And you see just a brief outline of him for a little while, and then they flash the whole, you know, him in the suit. He looks like fucking Batman. I don't care what you say. Christian Bale looked like a good Batman. Like, he, he, he fit the profile. Christian I Bale was a good Batman. No, he wasn't. He was t- he was a great he was he's a great Bruce Wayne, but he was a Bruce shitty Wayne, fucking shitty Batman. Batman. But and I'm still with that. And ever since I've heard him say that, I'm all for that exact same example because it's true. The you're basing your entire argument on oh, it's going to be fantastic. Well, we thought Christian Bale was going to be fucking fantastic. We, I was. looked at him. No, he wasn't. That's the problem. You think he was, which also proves how terrible you are at judging anything. Like you're terrible. But, but, personal attacks aside, because I can win without them. Below the belt. Oh, it wasn't that below the belt. They, maybe the thirty-year-old woman comment earlier that was below the belt. He, he, that's a compliment. He, he likes that. He likes that, eh? Well, that's because he also likes Superman and Batman, and that yeah. just makes. And this will be sense. amazing. Jo- Donna Justice. Mark my Justice words. Justice League. This is going to be fucking. We got terrible. Aquaman, Jason Momoa. Fucking Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, come Jason, on, Jason Momoa. I don't, know. I don't envy you. I don't like it. Rick Jody wins. I have to give it to Jody. I'm sorry. I wanted to give it. <laughs> For the record, Dave, I won twice, technically. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, technically, I won twice later in this game, too. Sorry, Dave. It's another loss. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that. I will say, though, 
I don't envy you because I have two wins and you have none. All right, let's continue. <laughs> I guess we have to say our goodbyes. We'll though. say our goodbyes. You should start first, though, because you are you look like you're going to tear up in a minute. <laughs> he and, wanted the win. And you really wanted that win. He was, he was, he was arguing. I was right. And no, you weren't right. Uh, <laughs> I was right about everything. Uh, <laughs> He's such a graceful loser. <laughs> I was right about everything. Congra- oh, I'm sorry, I need to be politically correct. You're not a loser. You're winning impaired. Congratulations, Jody. Thank you. Uh, well, you that know, sounded like it hurt. Oh, it did. I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, well, I, uh, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's really like... That's it. No more podcasts. He's, he's, like, like, he's like, and now this is the last episode. Because no, 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 no. all these guys can fuck I'm themselves. hosting. I'm hosting the next one. And, that's fine. And we'll see how this goes. All right. So. Oh, that sounds like a bias. <laughs> Kevin's gonna win. Kevin. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, so you sign up. Jeff. All right. So this is uh, Jeff Mater for Trivial Debates. I was your host this week. Uh, our winner, Jody. Jody, our runner-up, Dave Mater, and, and our loser, our loser. Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Just out of curiosity, have you ever won one? He has one. Just the one. He's got oh, one. okay. I've won two. Hey, Dave, how many of you won? Yeah, I'm always <laughs> six. Thanks. Oh, it's six. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. There was only, what, eight episodes? Yeah. Seven. Thank you.